What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to a new and explosive episode of The Vile Files. I'm your host, Nick, joined by the household. Genevieve, Amanda, Derek, Allie is back in Minneapolis. Uh, we got Justin, we got in my love, 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 my <laughs> pop culture correspondent, fiance, Natalie Joy is with us. In my love, love, love. love. <laughs> we have just a explosive episode today. Don't forget Elegant Vitali. Ele- elegant. Ele- an, ele- an Elegant Vitali. Yeah. We'll call back to our last episode. We named our baby. So go check out our episode with Cammie Crawford. Yeah. Some real spoilers. Uh, Lindsay Hubbard is here. It's, <laughs> it, has, it has arrived. So much so that, yeah, it's Wednesday. I know we usually drop these episodes on Thursday. This is not a new, like, new norm. This is just special because we know BravoCon happened. There's a lot of tea out there. Uh, we had the pleasure of talking to Lindsay, and boy, did she... she she activated us. Absolutely. You will be activated. Absolutely. Just like, uh, just like Lindsay likes it, I think. Because I think it's something where I'm always reminded talking to someone post breakup, like how fresh things are. And I think you can read facts. And then when you hear it from the source, it's like, oh, my God, it is so much more humanizing and intense when you think about someone literally going through this and not just being like, oh, yeah, this is the timeline of events. Yeah. You know, what's so interesting about this, this episode and you know, so much of the focus was like how it all went down, like how Kit, how Carl did it. The fact that it was on a TV show, you know, with all the talks in Bravo World with Bethany and talking about the reality TV reckoning. Um, you know, we talk about obviously reality TV on the show all the time, and we talk about you know, you know, we're always having conversations. Is it the, is it the edit? Do we have to ho- hold the the cast accountable? You know, Lindsay knows what she signed up for. You know, she's a pro in a sense. And she's accepted that she wants to be a part of this world. She wants to be a part of this show. And she obviously has a lot of thoughts and feelings about this breakup, but I really respected the fact that her focus was on Carl and the cast. She never used uh, the show or, you know, production, you know, as an excuse. Like, yeah, it's easy to get frustrated at them, but they're all making a TV show. Like she, Carl could have not chose to do what he did you know regardless of what production said to him those were his choices uh and i really respect the hell out of Lindsay for focusing the breakup despite many of her pains being the fact that it was part of the show and how carl went about it i really like that she focused her uh energy uh on holding the right person accountable and not using you know what's going on in the news as a way to kind of you know bitch and complain about things that you know, she might think will um, add to her cause, but she she didn't. And I, I really re- respect that. So I'm excited for you guys to listen to it. But we have uh, a little bit more to get into. Yeah, I was going to say, well, speaking about bitching, you had a frustrating airport experience. Is that right? Air Canada hates pregnant women. <sighs> oh, that's a bold claim. Yeah. Well, I don't, maybe, maybe they just hate people. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, uh, I'm, but I'm pretty sure they definitely hate pregnant women. Yeah. American. What did they do? I don't know. It was <laughs> it was it was the worst. It was the worst moment of my pregnancy, I think. I um we are in Toronto yeah. for Alex Cooper. She did her Call Her Daddy podcast tour. We were her special guests. It was absolutely amazing. Lovely time. Lovely trip. Yeah. Everything's great. Car service picks us up at 5:45 a.m. On Monday morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have an 8 a.m. flight. We're supposed to get back to L.A. at like 1030 a.m. It is great. Right. Great timing. Love it. Flying first class. Got the lay down down bed coming up. Yeah. Mm. Alex Cooper treated us right. And so we get to the airport and we're like, oh, we need to add Steve, our new puppy, to our reservation. And because I called Air Canada before we left. LA and was like hey what are like the rules I don't know you know and um they said just get to the airport with enough time to add him to pay for it and add him to your reservation so that is what we did we walk up to the front desk now Nally and I always try to go out of our way to approach the counter with smiles a big howdy do how's your day we try to be engaging. Howdy do. Howdy do. <laughs> yeah. Can we rub your feet? Yeah. yeah. Just need a back scratch. It's just, it's just, we find that 
a little bit of smiles and conversation can go a long way. You know, the people who work at airports, it's a mixed bag. And I will say nine times out of 10, I've met some really lovely people behind the counter. You know, like when your bag is two pounds overweight and they're like, I'll let it slide, you know? You can tell that the people who work behind the counter have the ability to help you if they want to. And they, they have the ability to help exception. you if they don't want to. This particular young lady who is uh, working behind counter 12 5, right <laughs> out there. Call her out. <laughs> no, I fucking hate this person. Oh. Yes. <laughs> okay. You could just tell it was like she was looking for a reason not to let us on our flight. So right off the bat, she's like, oh, well, hmm. Well, I have to see if it's a full flight because, like, there might be something with the weight. I've heard this before, like, weight bag shifting around. Like, for Steve, for there might be a full flight of already in cabin pets. Oh, oh, whatever that means. I don't know. Steve weighs four pounds. (laughs) Okay. It's like, okay. Like, but you could just tell her energy was just looking for something. And we were trying to make conversation with her, ignoring us. Mm. Then she almost, like, it was like bad news when she was like, oh, well, no, it looks like it's going to be okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then it was like, oh, sorry, your past check-in. Your flight's in 84 minutes. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, cool. We're, we're here. We're ready. No check bags, by the way. We're not, yeah. checking, we're not checking any bags. No, sorry. You, if you don't check in uh, 90 minutes prior to your flight, uh, we can't do anything about it. Can't get on your flight. I'm like, are you, are you punking us? I'm like, no, you're kidding, right? Because like, you'd been there. Nervous. You'd been at the airport so here's the at thing. the 90-minute mark, right? No, actually, we, I don't know. But maybe, maybe we showed up at the 90 minute mark. I don't know. And then but, her talking to us and adding Steve and whatever. Like we were like a, little long. a few minutes late. But that apparently doesn't matter. Had we checked in online prior to arriving in the airport and still showed up with like, I don't know, 60 minutes left, let's say. It had nothing to do with us physically being there at all. Oh. No. And they were just like, sorry, there's nothing we can do. And they were like, no, you're, you're like, you're literally punking us. Natalie's like, crying obviously pregnant well, tired I'm, i start crying because she says we're there again it's 6 a.m she's like well the next flight is at um 7 10 tonight 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 7 tonight. p.m and she says it with a smile on her face it's also it is easy to cry at the airport so it is easy. so easy i am always so on the verge easy. of tears at the airport you i can't imagine adding pregnancy to the mix yeah. like i'm sobbing yeah no i was sobbing no they didn't care and it was clearly just like a problem that could have simply just been fixed by the click of a mouse. But there it is. And she literally told us, she's like, well, in the past, I could have helped you out, but like, I just don't want to get in trouble or something. I'm like, well, can you please go speak to a manager? Yeah. Then she like huffs and puffs, grabs our passports and like leaves for 10 minutes as if we inconvenienced her. 10 minutes though. So we're adding time. So we're adding more time. She finally comes back with two people like this manager and he gives us this, and they're, they're literally lying to us. Because I'm like, can you, like, there's, we saw, like, the check-in line. It was moving quickly. But I'm like, can we just, we, again, we don't have a check bag. We're, like, ready to get on our flight. Like, yeah. let's, let's go. They're like, nope, sorry, there's nothing we can do. You know, just, it's, it's a policy. And I'm like, and I'm like, we're, we're right here. Like, why can't you just let us go? Like, can't you just, you know, press a button? And I'm like, and I'm trying to understand. I'm like, so you're telling me, had I checked in online and showed up yeah, 20 minutes from now, that would have been fine. They're like, yeah, yeah. She said it's written all over our website. It's all over our website you, that we recommend showing up three hours prior to your flight. So we look on the website and it says 90 minutes. There, fine print at the bottom of the website. 90 minutes, there is a cutoff. Um, and if you don't make it, you will likely miss your flight. Likely. Yeah. Well, I'm like, what does likely mean? Hmm. And they're like, sorry, we, we won't make any exceptions. But like, what about that likely part? That likely tells me like, you have the option to let us on if you want. We're, we're like in a sheer panic at this yeah. point. Yeah. Um, and know. then she says, okay, well, um, there are phones over there where you can go and make your next reservation for your next flight. And yeah. it's like, well, you can't help us. And the guy goes, sorry, there's a line full of people who are trying to make their flight. I'm like, that's what we're trying to do. They, so they, like, they just said, basically told us to fuck off. And I have a video of this lady, like, Later, like 10 minutes later, after we figured out, it was probably longer than 10 minutes, just like fucking around the counter, like mocking passengers and just doing literally nothing. Just like fucking around. What do you Uh, mean mocking passengers? (laughs) That's alarming. She was doing, yeah, I'll show you. She was like doing like this runway catwalk and she was like, and then 
<laughs> I'll show you. It's, She's it's, like waving her own no, it, 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 it got cases, so bad like that I the panties. panties. <laughs> no, I, I, I was like in this, this panic. I'm like, here's my pregnant fiance. We have a dog. We have my pregnant fiance. And they're like, sorry, you can't leave for 13 hours. You know, and they're like, nothing we can do. You know, whatever. The guy, the her manager is like, sorry, but like, we just can't let you in because there's like, there's paperwork, there's customs, there's all that. We, by the, when we finally went through check-in and customs, because in Toronto, you go to customs, U.S. customs in Toronto to like, save Expedite, time on the other yeah. side, whatever. Six minutes. And then our flight, the original flight was delayed 20 minutes. 20 minutes. So that flight, they yeah. wouldn't let us on because we were six minutes too late. It was delayed 20 minutes. I didn't give a fuck. Oh my God. And this was despite their themselves because ultimately what they do is canceled our, our reservation, got our money back and then booked us on like economy. So we had to just like, you know, we were, you know, there's no first class available. So eventually we got on an earlier flight, had to sit in the fucking back of the plane, Okay. whatever. Um, so we were stuck in Toronto for like five hours instead of 13. So that, you know, worked out but like every step of the way every person who works for air canada actively doesn't want to help you mm. they don't they like get they get off on not helping you and they just condescendingly just re re recite these fucking policies the guy said to me so sir you want me to break our policy i go that's exactly what i'm asking you to do that would be a huge help if you could go ahead and click that mouse and just allow us to check in because you're literally telling me if i did this seven minutes early earlier online without even being here. I didn't even have to be here. Right. It would have been fine. But you're, you're because your system um, says, nope, they're, you're just telling me to fuck off. Especially with no backdrop involved. Because backdrop, I kind of get why it's like a really hard cutoff of like, yeah. we have to load the bags at this yeah, point this in time. This is not a check-in right. thing. Like yeah, this wasn't like, yeah, in the United States, yeah, if you're trying to check a bag and it's 45 minutes, they're like, sorry, we we don't have time to get your bag on the plane. Right. Like, like our, our, con our intricate yeah. system is of conveyor belts no, this is, was cannot just, do that. This yeah. was just a technical computer. St and they literally said like, well, it's our system's kind of automatic. They clearly have the ability to override this. It's so obvious that yeah. they do. They were just like, like, no, we don't care. And that I think what made me so frustrated is that no one throughout this process, I'm obviously sobbing and no one is like, I'm so sorry. I'm sure this is frustrating. Like no one tried to reason. It was just like, no, hate it for you. But like you can go over there and call. Yeah, sucks to suck. Sucks. But literally that's off. how they were. Like truly fuck Air Canada. <laughs> it's like as if all they'd say like Canadians are so nice and we had a lovely time. But it's like every bad apple got like shipped over to Air Fucking Canada. And it's like they couldn't get a job as a parking meter. So they decided to work for Air Canada because the people who work for Air Canada are the people who like to ruin people's day. When you say work as a parking meter, you mean a meter like meter. meter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry. No, I was like, sick burn. I'm an activator. You can get a fucking job standing there yeah. taking quarters in your mouth. No, but the same people give like par off parking tickets. Like there's certain people in this world that like enjoy bringing sadness to others. <laughs> they get off on it like it, it yeah. makes them feel like little you know well i think just it's little small people who are just like sad and pathetic and you want to feel like lives. the gatekeepers of law and order yeah i think is what it comes down to like i think it comes down to like this really like this need for control and liking for there to be rules and liking to be like nobody's above the law and it's like but sometimes people are above the law <laughs> well, and i thought i thought i would offend my you know canadian friends because i was like fuck you air canada on instagram and i knew that you were mad because this was black screen, white text. <laughs> like you did not even go for like an orange gradient yeah, or something. No. This was create mode in yeah. a fury. Oh, yeah. I was so fucking mad. Um, you thought you might offend Canadian friends? Yes. I thought, and my DMs ever since I posted, every Canadian's like, fuck Air Canada. That's a problem. No competition. <laughs> And competition matters because that's no Air Canada has like two fucking major airlines. It's basically Air Canada, I guess. And that's that's what happens when you have no other options. They're like, fuck you. We don't care. You're going to fly us anyways. Speaking of competitions, speaking of competitions, how this is this episode of Special uh, Forces. First of all, it's back. Finally got some airtime. Thank God. Yeah. I mean, this uh, whole episode was like Nick. Yeah, it was a lot of me. Um. Yeah. This was. It was brutal. It was. What do you remember about that? Like, well, what I remember is like they bizarrely showed the whole episode. This was the most edited episode I saw. And I, I you know, they have to make a TV show. Whatever. I mean, they they captured the meat of it. They just showed everything out of order. So how they basically aired it was they woke up. 
you know, we're all struggling. And they had the first thing they aired was us flying up into the mountains. And they were trying to like emphasize the extreme conditions of being in the mountains. Like, don't get me wrong. It was fucking cold. It was colder than not being in the mountains. But apparently they wanted to make it seem like it was the Antarctic or something. So like they air the, the leopard walk. I'm like, you see me shaking, you know, like, because, well, that's not why I was shaking because I was shaking because in reality, the thing that they aired at the end, the, the bee sting where they uh, were on that course, that was actually in the morning. So the way they aired it, it makes it seem like I got hypothermia from like carrying Tom on my shoulder for, a, you know, a mile. Like. Actually, he's I was so cold, cold, cold blooded. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was actually like pretty fucking sweaty then, you know. So I didn't really like that. It just really, really makes sense to me. I don't know if pe- if for people watching it, because I assume people who watch it aren't watching obviously as closely as I am, and they weren't there. They don't know what happens. Like it being on the show definitely reminds me, you know, when we recap these shows and cast are complaining about edit. Like I can. Pr- obviously appreciate what it's like to be like that's not how it happened you know when you when you experience something that's so personal and so intense it's it sometimes can be frustrating to see things out of order but nevertheless they aired the relative things and they have a tv show to make so whatever but the hypothermia came from the beasting which they showed at the end which was us and you could tell like if you watched it like they're like it's nighttime and it was clearly the sun was coming up like (laughs) you know it was like weird shit like that when they had me carry Tom, like we had to parry, carry Tom and Bodie for like a half mile, I, so I dropped Tom and I asked for help for like, um, and Jojo, to her credit, like re- rushed over. Jack was having none of it. And Jojo put Tom on her shoulder for like 10 feet. Now, for like, to Jojo's credit, like, you know, Tom's close to 200 fucking pounds and Jojo's, I don't know how much she weighs, but that's a lot of weight. So she, to her credit, ran over, put Tom on his shoulders, and she went like 10, 10 feet. And I'm like, all right, I'll take him the rest. Well, they make it seem like on the show that like Jojo comes in and carries him the rest of the fucking way. <laughs> Nick passes him off to Jojo and she's like, ooh, 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 ooh. They, all show, the way to the end. they show the same like clip of her twice because yeah. they only had 10 feet of her doing. I'm texting her, you motherfucker. Yeah. She's like, you, I knew you'd hate that. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a great episode. I feel like people are getting, I've heard this, I I heard this, um, from our friend Fran over at Chicks in the Office who's watching it. I think people, and I heard this from Amy Kaufman, Mm -hmm. friend of show, uh, I think fans are getting tired of seeing Tom do kind of well, you know? And it's interesting because like he, he did well on the challenges and you'll see kind of what happens. I'm, I'm curious how they'll show how things end for Tom, you know? not to give anything away. It It, it ends for all of us. But, um, you know, when it came to the challenges, Tom, Tom, he's a, he's a grinder. Um, he's, you know, they're not showing these little moments where he is Tom Sandoval and kind of get like, for example, at the end of the day. So in reality, what it really started with is us waking up. We did that beasting for 45 minutes. We're jumping in the trough of frozen water and we had to jump in the trough every time we did the circuit. So, By the time we were done, the trough was empty because we were just like tracking so much out. Yeah, tracking so much out. And you saw Bodhi like with his hands, they were we were all frozen. Yeah. Like that's how I got hypothermia. So the day started with that. And I was hyperthermic in the morning. Then we had to go up the mountains. And then I had to do the leopard walk. And then they didn't show after the leopard walk. We're in the mountains and they're like, fuck you guys, you guys suck. We had to run up the hill like two or three times, hold our bergens over our head for like two or three minutes. Uh, and we were just gassed after that. They just edited that out. They didn't even show that. Uh, flew back. Then they had to. We had to do the fireman walk. Where I had to carry Tom Tyler, just an absolute beast, like just freaking running with Bodie on his back, just Nick's an absolute like, machine. Yeah. 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 Every step, and Tyler's just silent, silent, just like, <laughs> running. That well, way. yeah, I made some weird fucking noises, but those noises were at the very end. They make it seem like it's like the whole way through. <laughs> Uh, I'm like okay the whole time I'm videoing Nick on screen because I'm like trying to get clips of him on screen and he's just bitching in the background being like that's not how it was happening so all you bachelor uh, alumni that are mad at me when we recap this show I hear you I understand you I empathize but you know we have a job to do Um, and so yeah so then we got done with that I I had my interrogation that day and then at the very end when they called us out and they made it seem like we did the beasting thing we had to build a fort so they split us up into two teams and we had to build forts out of like sandbags and tires. So it was just an hour of filling sandbags, carrying sandbags. It was just more physical activity. That's where I had to like shake Tom. I had to grab Tom 
and shake them and be like, you got to calm down because we got done with her fort and it was me, Jack, Tom, and Tyler. And Tyler being in construction, Jack seems to know everything. We just let the, you know, they, we had a good fort and so we won the fort, whatever, no big deal. But like we were done and we had like, we had to use all the equipment on the grounds. And so, yeah, we had, there was like more tires and more sandbags available. And Tom's like, we got to use more stuff. I'm like, no, we're like, we're good. And like, he's like freaking out. And I had to like grab him. I'm like, you have to calm down. And it was like little moments like that where like, they're just not showing Tom just kind of like losing his shit every now and then. And someone like telling him to like relax or calm down and things like that, which not that he was looking bad per se. It's just like, they're just, there's so many little things. They just don't have time, time to get to. But I think it's like, it's getting frustrating for all the, all the fans or like the Bravo fans who like are tuning in, wanting to see like Tom get his ass kicked or struggle. Like Tom's doing pretty well. And I think it's almost backfiring on, on Spa, Fox Special Forces in a way. I don't know. Because they're, they're like, I don't want to see Tom like rise to the occasion um and do well and he's certainly had a couple moments where he did that you know oh my i did you speaking of tom sandoval bravo con this weekend was did you everybody... see his pants wait he didn't have pants. skirt he wore a skirt oh i thought they were like like what the what the men in the olden days wear where it's like the like big... pantaloons <laughs> yeah, or... like <laughs> what are they called pantaloons yeah no he it was like a kilt it was a, i thought it was a kilt yeah, i thought it was a kilt too oh, yeah. I, I thought they were like long big Puffy shorts. Oh, yeah, like wide legged. Like <laughs> you just thought he had puffy shorts on? <laughs> to be fair, I he don't... totally would do that. He would. The man would. He totally would. would do that. When he did the push up contest with James, I feel like he kind of lost that, did he? I didn't he see the end totally of it. He did. Lost, yeah. He did. Yeah. James was like lifting a leg up and then he was like lifting an arm up. Like he was going so much faster. Maybe his form wasn't. I, I, I watched that video. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that there was, it seemed like there was some drama about Sheena spending a lot of time with Tom Sandoval in his like hotel room and then she was saying she was quote defending ariana but it just it makes me question like what are what is the state of the union for the vanderpump cast because before it was so clearly everyone's pissed at tom he fucked up he's a pariah and now it's like in this middle ground have some people forgiven him like lala saying stop booing him or stop being mean to him i yeah. kind of agree with lala i i think the cast all really doesn't give a shit anymore other than maybe Ariana. And I think the cast is kind of playing the game of trying to take the pulse of their fans, you know? And I think a lot of the hate that Tom got from the cast, at least over time, was somewhat performative. Not all. Like, some people truly despise him. Katie doesn't have anything nice to say about him anytime we talk to Katie. You know, I think there's a genuine disinterest from Katie's part, but you know, Sheena's been friends with Tom, you know, I think some of these other people have hung out with Tom and I think it takes a lot of energy to stay angry. And I think also, again, these are a bunch of people who don't give a fuck about cheating. A lot of them, you know, so how it's one thing to put on a good show at the reunion and, you know, mouth off. But like, do you really think that like James and some of these other people who are just waking up every day, just holding up this anger and hatred to Tom in their heart. Like there's not, you know? And I think they're just trying to figure out what's like how to handle it as it relates to what their fans expect of them. But, you know, when I talk to Tom with special forces or I see him, it's just like, you know, Tom and I aren't going out and hanging out and we aren't becoming best buds and like making like videos together. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like I just there's no point in like if you if you can't be around him without name calling him or beating him down there's 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 no point in being around him like i I don't think at this point constantly telling tom he's a piece of shit is healthy or you know good for anyone it's just revenge at that point yeah it's like cathartic like as you're just trying to get stuff out because it's true that i don't know if you want to actually change someone's mind usually you have to be somewhat close to them so that way they'll listen to you and so it kind of begs the question of like, if there's this force level of interaction because of shooting Vanderpump, are some people taking the path of like, well, if I actually want to get through to you, if I actually want to have meaningful conversations, I do need, I can't just be like yelling at you the whole time. And so it, yeah. it, it kind of begs the question, like how it's just, people, it's, there needs to be some sort of turn, you know, like is, is Tom going to grow from this or not? I don't know. And I guess also with Ariana, like 
when does she become indifferent? Because she doesn't seem indifferent yet. Mm-hmm. And I think Ariana is going to be the decision maker with a lot of the rest of the cast and the fans. Like when Ariana says it's okay not to hate Tom, then other people will fall in line, I think. I feel like it's time to let it go. I feel like I there have been times where I think my friends have forgiven someone for something nasty. And I've been like, I will not forgive you for what you did to my friend. But there's a difference between forgive and just like, I'm indifferent now. I don't think that she should forgive him and be best friends and hang out with him. It's There's a difference between Tom's doing his thing. I'm not really like interested in Tom. We, I've moved on. I'm dating versus like still taking the opportunity to shame or ridicule or express anger and vitriol towards him, you know? And I just feel like indifference is like the way to go at this point in the game for everyone on that cast. I don't know. Or maybe they just have to keep it going for season 11. I don't fucking know. I'm I'm sure season 11, she's still angry at him. And that kind of is like part of the drama and part of why people want to tune in. They still live together. Does that, at what point does that become kind of nutty? Well, I think like she said, they're just super busy. Come on. (laughs) Come on. Well, I, I haven't bought a house How, before. I haven't sold a house before. How much? I It feels like maybe that's like the kind of thing where like there would be a real estate person who'd be like, hold out this amount of time. I mean, I will say Katie and Tom yeah, did exactly. it quite fast. Can't they help them? Yeah. Give them some pointers? No, one, no one's saying there wouldn't be inconveniences here or there wouldn't, you know, this is this is not what either of them wanted, right? Especially Ariana. She didn't want Tom to she on her. It sounds like she wanted to stay in that relationship and she wanted to live in their house. It didn't work out that way. But to be able to live in the same house and while allegedly simultaneously like not be not be willing to speak to someone, it's just it's not adding up. It's, and it seems like in the tiny little sneak peek teaser that they dropped for Vanderpump season 11, where it's like just like a few clips of scenes. One of them is Lisa Vanderpump being like it, it's seemingly like trying to. Ha- have Lala and Sheena like empathize with Tom a little bit more where she's like he lost all of his friends he lost his business and it's like I don't know that she's ultimately defending him but it's clear that she's trying to like it's nothing to do with defending him at this point what yeah. he did was wrong he's we've we've covered that you just got to hold him accountable for making different choices in his life and not look the other way or turn a blind eye when you see him being a piece of shit you know but if you were his friend in the past you should be allowed to try to be their friend and try to see if he's willing to turn a page, you know? And if they think he's a lost cause, I guess they can say that and just say, I I don't really want anything to do with him. I don't believe anything he says, but I think there's a difference between that and like still like going out of your way to throw punches at him, so to speak, Yeah, you know? Well, Ariana, in the clip where it's like, she's yelling, like you ruined my life, you ruined my home and then tried to kill my fucking dog. Yeah, what was that about? (laughs) I'm I'm curious. I mean, she's still throwing punches. She's still throwing. But as I would too, if someone tried to like. Well, I want to know what that story is. Yeah. Did Tom really try to kill her dog? Is this the dog that had has already passed? <gasps> no. Charlotte. No. Or I did don't she think get a new dog? Charlotte. I no, think... they have. They had two dogs. They had two I dogs. Believe. So this. Well, I mean, she could have. This could have been a. A crime that was revealed to Ariana after the fact. You know, maybe she found out that Tom did something in the past and like, and you tried to kill my motherfucking dog two years ago. I didn't even realize. Right. It feels like this is like a, in sequential order, of though, like first you were in my life. Now you're ruining yeah, my yeah, home. Yeah. And then you tried to kill my dog. Like, it's like that's how it happened. Yeah. I feel like it was something recent. There is. I could be wrong. Because they are still living in the same house together. So I'm sure the dog is still there. There is that. So uh, like, what if he was like, I'm not feeding this dog ever. It seems like unlikely. Kill my dog that, by starvation. Yeah, like what is trying to kill? Like maybe he accidentally kill. dropped some chocolate. Yeah, I think being the very he was reckless. just like eating some chocolate. Great, <laughs> yeah. great chocolate, avocado, reckless everything. Tom. Just it on the yeah. That I buy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actively trying to kill a dog, I don't buy that at all. Yeah, I don't think Tom would do that. But we'll see. How well. is his podcast going? He just had shorts on, so okay, like. Well, two guys, how many guests can he get that are his friends? Two guys who I, I've been trying to get on mine, but they both tell me they don't want to really talk about anything interesting. So. I what what doesn't about. Schwartz want to talk about? Well, you know, he doesn't like want to cover any of the stuff in the past. It's just like, well, I don't want to like focus on that, but 
Well, how do you cover what's in the future? Because we don't know what's yeah. going to happen in the future. <laughs> we haven't had you on this <laughs> show silly. yet. So we have a lot to cover, Tom. We have a lot to cover about your relationship with Katie. And do you have any regrets? And how are you dating now? We have a lot to cover about your friendship with Tom. Where is it now? Are you ho- What's different? What's changed? Are you... Has a dynamic change? Are you do you treat him differently? Do you how do you hold each other more accountable? You know, like what are your thoughts on the Raquel Rachel interview? Like, of course I'm gonna ask about this shit. So I'm like, I'm not gonna have them on if they want to talk about fucking baseball and <laughs> drinking. I don't fucking, you know, like <laughs> fuck. So if whenever they grow a pair, they're You're welcome. Listening. They're welcome on the show. <laughs> and yeah. you know they I, dare I, you. I really, I really like Schwartz the time I like talking to him he's obviously a very affable guy and he's nice and he's super friendly and and i get from schwartz's standpoint it's just like i don't think i don't think schwartz is just dying to do any interview you know and so i get it he just doesn't want to deal with shit uh sandoval on the other hand like clearly loves attention you know likes to be out there and it's like hey if you want to be out there you're gonna have to talk about some shit you know i really want to know if tom a knows the difference and B cares if there's a if he doesn't understand the difference between famous and infamous. Hmm. Hmm. You don't think Tom does? I, I would want to know if he knows the difference. He might be from the no such thing as bad press, press school yeah. of yeah. thought. And yeah, maybe he just doesn't care. But maybe he does. Yeah. Well. I, I would be curious where that line is for him. You know, because clearly he's going to be like, yeah, I know the difference. And of course, I want people to like me. But I want to know what that line is, because he does a lot of things where he has no problem leaning in, you know? Oh, yeah. And as long as he gets the clicks. Well, I'm grateful Lindsay leaned in so much on this interview. She it's did. A, it's a big baller one. I'm excited for it's everyone to hear. So fucking, what's uh, any late, latest on Travis and Kels? Well, I think have this is <laughs> okay. So Taylor is super specific with what she does on social media. She follows zero people. Zero. Yeah, zero. Absolutely zero. But she liked a People magazine Instagram post when they announced that Travis is like now the leading tight end, which happened after the Germany game. He broke game. a record. Yeah, I, and so Rob she Gronkowski's liked that record. Was it? Uh, I think it was a Kansas was a City record. Oh, to be okay. honest, uh, I could be wrong. I feel like. Bronx I don't think it was. I, I don't. I don't think it was an all-time like okay. NFL record, but it was a big deal. Sorry. But she. But she did that after that game, which she hosted a viewing party for just the girlfriends and wives of the players. That is huge. She's putting herself in that category. She's a. She's yeah, a wag. She, she's a, a what? Yeah, a wag. A wag. Yeah. Wife of wife. Wife and, and girlfriend. girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wife of girlfriend. <laughs> she's part of the. She's part of the community of wives. Yeah. And girlfriends. Yeah. Wow. And it's tight knit. And sorry, because I worked for the Cubs, like the baseball team. I worked uh, in the center where like the players' children, I like basically babysat the players', players children during games. And so that was also where like wives and girlfriends would hang out. And it can be like, you know, the Cubs' wives are all like super nice and welcoming. But you could definitely tell that there's like people who've been with the team longer. There's like social dynamics that kind of replicate like the dynamics of how the players are, like how important they are. And it's like, it can be, I feel like, tough to break into. And so I'm glad that she's. Taking right. it in stride and... Well, they're still going strong. I hope she goes to Lambeau Field when they play the Green Bay Packers. Hmm. We won't be there. And let's tailor. If you go, let us know. Then we'll try to change our plans. <laughs> we'll move things around. Yeah. yeah, we'll move things around. Before we get to Lindsay, just want to say thank you, everyone, for listening. For all the people who are tuning in to this show for the first time, don't forget we're on at least three times a week. We got our Ask Nick segments on Monday. If you love our texting office hour for Lindsay, you'll love Ask Nick. A lot of relationship and dating stories. Uh, that are fun, entertaining, and helpful. And then we have our reality recap every Tuesday where we cover all reality things, reality TV, pop culture, and then our going deepers, which are usually on Thursday, but special case here with Lindsay. Don't forget to send in those questions at asknick at thevalfiles.com. Uh, for all things Ask Nick, texting office hours, you know the drill. All right, everybody, get ready to be activated. It's time for Lindsay Hubbard. All right. Well, it's a uh, holiday season is quickly approaching. And if you are looking to sell your amazing products to your customers, you got to check out Shopify. Shopify is an amazing platform that I have been using for years. To me, it's the only platform you should be using to be running your e-commerce platform. Regardless of the size of your business, Shopify has a solution for you. So if you are a one-man team, Shopify is perfect for you. If you employ thousands of people, Shopify perfect for you. It is amazing what they have, how easy it is, how easy it is to set up a website and have it be customer facing, 
You can design it. You can change functionality. It's drag and drop functionality. Super easy. I can't say enough of amazing things about it. So if you are starting a business, you got to check out Shopify. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. It's also super fun. You can literally have on your mobile, like they have a great mobile app. You can like know when people are in their shopping bag and, and not. It's, you know, honestly, if you're starting a business, it just makes it fun when you get your first sale and you get that little cha-ching notification. Right now, sign up for a $1 per month trial period. Go to shopify.com slash V-I-A-L-L now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash V-I-A-L-L, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash V-I-A-L-L. My best friend, Jill, gets me the most spectacular gifts every year. And every year I feel like such a little dingleberry because I want to show my love with gifts, but sometimes I am not good at figuring out what exactly to get them. Uncommon Goods has come in so clutch. The thing that I love about all of their products is that they are really cater to people's particular interests, people's particular style. So it really feels like a thoughtful, heartfelt gifts. So for example, they have a hot sauce making kit, which is like, you know, sometimes men are really hard to shop for. They have a whole four men gift section. They also have beautiful jewelry based on what month people were born in, like just the full range, everything from like beautiful artisanal pieces to really helpful gadgets. I got the office, these holiday cocktail bombs. You just put a certain type of whatever type of alcohol you want in a cup. And then you put the little bomb in. There's like holiday flavors. We love those, by the way. From art and jewelry to kitchen, home and bar, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone. Not the same lackluster gifts you could find just anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give back $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $2.5 million to date. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's uncommongoods.com slash V-I-A-L-L for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer, Uncommon Goods. We're all out of the ordinary. All right, Lindsay, should we do these shots? Yeah. By the way, we met before. I was where? Was it at? It was at like a friend's Super Bowl party. I told you. In I'm like February of like 2000. I'm like, there's a chance Lindsay's gonna come in and say we've met because I think we met. And this was like literally I, I looked it up. It was February 2019. So almost five years ago. Was it five years ago? Yeah. And you were like t- just talking about Summer, Summer house. house. And I remember yeah. like, cool. You're <laughs> like, like I, never, I have no idea what you're talking about. No idea about. what you're like, talking cool. about. They're like, it's this new show. We filmed the half I'm like, in. eight seasons later. <laughs> what do you know now, Nick? Yeah, yeah. Now I'm like begging you to come on. Uh, <laughs> you're like, how about tomorrow? <laughs> I'm like, okay. Like, I have nothing going on, but sure. All right, let's do this. Two, okay, celebra- but don't make fun of my face because I am terrible at shots. Okay, well, then don't make fun of mine because okay. I don't usually Cheers. rip shots of tequila. At, it's, it's, Two minutes into the afternoon, not the morning. So yay for us. Anything after 12 is great. All right. Well, here's to two months being single. Okay. On the dot. Uh, pop, 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 pop. Oh. Both of y'all look the exact same. Oh. Yep. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Ooh. All right. You ready? This better be juicy. <laughs> <laughs> you chasing it with some coffee? Uh-huh. Okay. okay. Right. God, do you need a chaser too? Oh. You did not grow up in Florida. No. <laughs> Are we all ready? Should we all just take a... A big deep breath. Just channel our redemptive kind of energy <laughs> around the men. <laughs> we want to spill tea. <laughs> around the men. Talk some shit. Yeah. Heal. Peacefully choose violence. <laughs> yeah, peacefully choose violence. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm definitely in more of a peaceful mood mood these days it's good first month was definitely violence <laughs> okay what a great place to start <laughs> uh lindsay welcome thanks thanks for having me it's so good to have you here yeah you know uh just... i haven't asked a guest in a few weeks to kick off an episode but how is your heart my heart is full, full. and i i feel really good about that i'm in i'm in a really good place right now and you just told us that today marks Two months mm-hmm. of being single. Yeah. Single Lindsay is back. And now Woo! we have a full heart. Yep. How, let's just give a round of applause for we love a full ha- heart after two months. That must not have been easy. Um, no, it wasn't. I would say in the beginning, it was like I was operating hour by hour. 
And when I tell you the entire world found out within 30 minutes of me, it was chaotic and hectic. And all of a sudden I had to go into hiding because I had to protect my privacy and I had to sort through my emotions and I had to get through the shock of it all. That first week, the first couple of days, it was like hour by hour. And then slowly but surely, as the weeks went on, it was like day by day. Yeah. And then a couple of days at a time. Then I was able to plan something for two weeks from now, but still operating, you know, in the present of day by day. And slowly but surely, I just, I really like created this war room in my apartment, you know, as I was in hiding because the whole world knew and I couldn't walk down the streets of New York without paparazzi who was stationed outside of my apartment and Dumois, you know, fans taking pictures. And so all my girlfriends just would come over. If you were in New York and you're one of my best girlfriends, you were at my apartment. I couldn't answer my phone. It was blowing up. I had certain best friends setting up conference calls with other best friends who weren't in New York. If one of you knew, like you would have to fill in the other one. So it was, it was very hectic. So Carl really did this on camera without giving you any heads up whatsoever. Yeah. That's It was like bonkers. the ultimate blindsiding of the year, for me at least. Um, there was no indication that he was having second thoughts or unhappy or having, None. you know. So despite Kyle, who recently mouthed off in the press and, and said how essentially he implied, strongly implied, that I think he pretty much said that you two were fighting constantly, kind of through couples therapy in your face. Yeah, basically saying that you guys I were would, in couples therapy. We were the whole in couples time. therapy, but which, we were not in couples therapy since we started dating, which is what Kyle said. Well, I will just want to point out: just you may disagree, but I I don't like that Kyle said it in a way where people who get couples therapy from a proactive standpoint is somehow a negative, you know, well, in a sense. Kyle's that a lot also in couples therapy, so <laughs> I don't really like yeah. when he's, you know, therapy shaming me for being in couples therapy. Yeah. Cause I didn't really understand. Okay, great. They've been in couples therapy since the beginning. I would, I would argue that would great, healthy, healthy couple being proactive. So to me, being in couples therapy isn't a sign of anything bad happening. So and certainly it wasn't to you. It didn't seem like. No. Carl and I started couples therapy about a year into dating, okay. right? And so it, not immediately. No, no, ex exactly. If you want to speak to my experience and my relationship, at least get the facts straight. So period. Yeah, period. <laughs> dot. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Carl and I started dating right after season six, September 2021, okay. September, October. We started couples therapy in... November of 2022, he was going through a really hard time with his job at Loverboy. He was very unhappy. Our communication was off. That honeymoon phase wore off. And, you know, I think in the beginning of Carl and I's relationship, it was like exciting. Like, oh my God, I just fell in love with my best friend. I've known him for forever. He's known me for forever. And we tried once before. It didn't work out. And now it seems to be working. And we, you have to add a lot of people in your ears, whether it's, you know, your castmates that you share a house with or, um, you know, whoever. So did you and Carl ever have conversations as a couple getting married, having big plans for the future? Like what conversations did you two have either outside or inside couples therapy about like, how do we separate like TV us versus real us? Or did you have conversations like that? Because to your point, like I couldn't imagine trying to maintain a healthy relationship and then filming a show that's, you know, just it, it's around creating drama. Like every moment you have is like, is this the end of the world or is it not? But we should act like it is and argue oh, about it. See, you know? so I'm how the did same you guys... on and off camera. Okay. Like I, I do not change 
for the cameras. I think what works to my benefit is I just always step in shit every season. And then, you know, I like wind up creating drama on accident. <laughs> so nothing was really just off limits between you two and the TV show. No, nothing's ever off limits. We started the show together eight seasons ago. And, you know, I we are both very aware. I do think, you know, I have more experience being in relationships on camera than than Carl does. He, you know, he you never really saw him in a relationship in his adult life. I was kind of that first adult relationship for him. I think he had he spoke on season one about how he dated some girl, you know, at some point in his early 20s. But does that really count? Not really. I mean, you change a lot in 10, sure. 12, 15 years. Does so. that concern you in general? Yeah. I mean, it concerned me, but I also was very patient and understanding, knowing that, all right, he doesn't have a lot of experience in relationships. I have more in the sense that I've been in and out of relationships in my adult life, um, you know, with terrible men, but, you know, still have the experience. I learned a lot how to compromise and how to, you know, sort of think about somebody else and their needs in a relationship capacity. I'm very much like an open book, especially on the show. I'm the same on and off camera. Nothing's exactly off limits. We never spoke about what would be on or off limits. But you also want to have respect for your partner, especially your partner who you're supposed to spend the rest of your life with. Mm -hmm. And you sort of like know in the back of your mind, okay, like there are certain things that you're not going to overshare, you know, like the details of your intimacy or anything that might happen at home that's a little bit like, you know, walking the line of this might, you know, be a little bit off like, limits. Like right? this is just a hypothetical, but if like if Carl was having like, say, performance issues, maybe you wouldn't bring that up. Correct. Hypothetically. 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 Um, but you guys generally had a pretty, hey, we're an authentic couple. I did. Now, I don't know. I think Carl might have, for instance, like last season when everyone's like, you guys are a little too happy or a little fake. It's a little like too much. Like it was a new relationship. What are you supposed to be? It was a be? new relationship. Carl is a very affectionate and loving guy. He's like a big teddy bear who loves to hug and kiss and hold hands. I don't think a lot of people saw that side of him, especially in the house, because we've never seen him in a relationship. And then, boom, all of a sudden, he's with me and he's like hugging me and loving me and kissing me and all over me. So I think that was a, a little bit of, you know, a startling experience for for everyone else in the house but he also likes to put his best foot forward he's a people pleaser i just i don't need the love and admiration from everyone around me i feel like i'm one of those people where i'm not i'm not your person you know to half of the fan base because you just can't stand me and i'm polarizing because i'm direct and straightforward and a straight shooter with my communication and then there's like the other half that they they see me for who I am, which is just very open and honest and, you know, wear my heart on my sleeve and, you know, you get what you get. You're kind of a take it, or leave, take it or leave it or. Yeah. Take, take it, it or leave it or. Take it or leave it or. <laughs> and did Carl. In this case, a leave it or. <laughs> yeah. So with the new relationship and people kind of responding the house, right? You know, you were just like, hey, you know, honeymoon relationship, people might treat us differently, but people started treating you too differently, including Carl. And do you think that affected him? Yeah, I do. I think, you know, he he never was in a position last season where all of a sudden it's like someone's going up against your girl and you got to protect your girl. I don't think he understood mm. or had the experience of how to do that. Right. Classic think Tom Schwartz. He almost, would sounds like I think he would almost like go numb and 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 get paralyzed. You know, if Kyle's running around the house and screaming at me for 20 minutes straight saying awful shit. Or if Craig Conover is, you know, visiting and he's saying some crazy shit, you know, or if or if the girls are, you know, coming after me, I don't think Carl had the tools to know how to, OK, this is my job as Lindsay's boyfriend to protect her and stand up for her. Like, I know her. I know her heart. I am with her every day. I wouldn't have fallen in love with her otherwise. And 
I think that took, you know, it took a lot of watching back for him to be like, okay, yeah, I think this is how I'm supposed to act. Um, you know, but yes, last season we were still in our honeymoon phase and then we, we leave the summer and we go back to regular life and, you know, he's conflicted about his job at Loverboy and he's trying to figure out what to do and whether to negotiate with Kyle or quit or is this, you know, working on an alcohol brand for somebody who's sober, is that the appropriate fit anymore? Has he mm. outgrown and does he want different things? So, you know, I think he was really stressed out about that, um, which is around the time that we started going to couples therapy. I think our communication was kind of all over the place. And we also were out of that honeymoon phase by then. It's interesting that you mentioned this, that kind of that boyfriend protector responsibility. And, you know, we, 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 we discussed it a lot through Scandaval and Katie and, and Tom Schwartz, but have you, you know, and this is kind of a household for a question for the household of ladies and, and question for you, Lindsay, you've dated other people too, but do you think that for some men that comes more instinctually, like, Hey, I have a girlfriend now, because I think a lot like Carl, the way you described him and like Schwartz was like, I think a lot of guys grow up have this mentality of like, I always have your boys back, you know, the whole, you know, bros before hoes kind of, you know, bullshit, but it seems like a lot of young men or maybe not so young, depending on who they are. Do they not learn that lesson or is it like a rite of passage? Like how, like with some of the young men that you guys dated, if you guys can go back when you're first boyfriends, but like, did you guys always have to have a conversation about like, Hey, it's not always bros before hoes kind of to your point. Like now in my life, it's just like my instinct will be the default is Natalie's right. <laughs> You know, but you know, but that's sometimes the, that takes a lot of time instinct. for a man I'm, to realize. I might, I might like, you know, be like, babe, what the fuck? You know, be, but like the instinct, if there is something going on, the instinct isn't like to with fig- somebody else. Yeah. Though, the right? instinct isn't to figure out what's going on. All right. You know, did she offend someone? Did she? No, the instinct is my partner is I have her back. There might be a conversation behind closed doors, be like, what are you doing? But, you know, right, but like right. the instinct is always to have my partner's back. Correct. And Uh, I think that comes from confidence and security within yourself and knowing who you are so that you can defend your partner. Because, you know, what happens is if you are not, if you don't really know who you are and you're not very secure with yourself and you're not very confident in, in, and you as, as a, as a, as a man or as a human, you might be a little bit more hesitant or afraid to defend your partner because you're more worried about what people are going to think of you than sure. you are about actually protecting your partner. That and makes sense. Carl struggle with that. Well, you know, <laughs> but I also am a fierce like fighter myself. Like I can defend myself. I grew up with a brother. Sure. I grew up with, you know, catty jealous girls and, and Florida. So, you know, I, I'm like, I'm pretty good at, yeah. you know, just off the cuff defending myself obviously we want to hear all the tea but like before but what did work we know it came to you and carl you know before you broke up and obviously you were blindsided what were things about the relationship that made you you personally Lindsay, feel like this is my man this is why i want to be in this relationship you know what were the reasons that gave you all the hope that you had and the reasons why you said yes and the reasons why you're planning a wedding what was it about the relationship that obviously was for you, sad to let go of? With Carl, the things that worked and why we got into a relationship to begin with, I mean, this is, this was my best friend. Yeah. You know, like we started this show together. It's an experience that not many people in this world can understand. And, you know, we spent years and years developing this friendship that eventually turned into a best friendship. And we, you know, spent so much time together on camera, off camera, a lot of time off camera where, you know, we would talk to each other about everything under the moon and he would come over to my apartment multiple times a week. And, you know, we just, we really developed a bond that I don't think a lot of people could necessarily see considering, you know, it was during the off season of filming. So fall, winter, spring, we've both gone through a lot of trauma while you know being friends and i think we were extremely trauma bonded you know his his brother unfortunately passed away and i was right there for him i went through an accidental pregnancy and miscarriage 
Um, I, you know, have have my own family traumas that I've been working on in therapy for years. He has his own family traumas. Um, so I think I think we were just really bonded on so many different levels and we had a lot of similarities, like similar sense of humor and, you know, lifestyle ones and 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 you know, we both enjoy activities and I'm I'm like a sports girl, uh, you know, and I love to play sports and so so there was like so many things. And when you have a best friend that you're extremely bonded with on so many different levels and then you fall in love, you're like, oh, my God, like this is crazy. Mm-hmm. I can't believe this happened. I I went from like the ultimate fairy tale doesn't exist. And I threw myself this twisted fairy tale birthday party, you know, on season six to falling in love with my best friend. And I was like, maybe the ultimate fairy tale does exist. And I, I don't know. I think I think it just worked. Like we just really understood each other from so many years of getting to know each other. And when he got sober, I was his number one support. And and even getting to his one year of sobriety, it was like, you know, he was he was really struggling for the last couple of months. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this with you. Like I'm I'm gonna commit to going sober with you through the holidays. We're gonna do this together you know, hand in hand, side by side. And I am going to walk you to that milestone so that you feel comfortable and that you can do this and you have a partner and a teammate. And at that point, we had just started dating. So and then I, you know, I wound up going five months without drinking, um, which was great. I I think I, I felt good. I looked good. I was in the best shape of my life. My skin was better than ever. Um, and I really, I really enjoyed that partnership and doing something as a team. And, you know, it, it really just, it worked in the beginning and in that, that full, you know, first year. Um, and then everything, <laughs> and then everything started shifting. Were you guys in couples therapy when he broke up with you? Um, we were supposed to go to couples therapy that day that he canceled. So leading up to the breakup you guys were in couples therapy and you still had no idea yeah no he didn't give me any indication he didn't say anything that would have alluded to you know i'm having cold feet or i'm having second thoughts or i'm not ready or i think we need more time like nothing he said nothing to me over summer he said nothing that would have given any clues. Um, I mean, two weeks before he ended things, I was at my bridal shower that he stopped by. Two weeks. No joke. And it was also, you know, simultaneous to my birthday. And he's doting all over Instagram, like, oh, my beautiful fiance, I can't wait to marry you in 100 days. Oh, my God, happy birthday to the love of my life, that my rock, my partner, everything. That was two weeks before the breakup. Then one week, I'm at my first dress fitting. He's at a suit fitting with his boys. One week, one week. And I'm like, okay. And then, you know, we're talking about inviting, you know, the rest of the cast to the wedding, like the new guy. He was talking to the new guy about, you know, inviting him to the wedding. I'm talking about this. And then three days later, boom, no indication, complete blindside and whiplash. I think back to these last conversations of that like last Sunday in the house over summer. And I'm just like, okay, was he trying to say something? But why on earth would I ever think that this is what he's trying to say? Well, also you were in couples therapy. So you would kind of think that if there there were concerns there was a space designated for bringing this up and working through them to your knowledge who knew before you did kyle maybe there might have been a conversation with his mom i don't think kyle knew i think kyle was blindsided too really yeah i really think it was an impulsive emotional decision out of anger what do you mean by out of anger were you did you guys get in a fight prior to that the last two weeks of summer His demeanor had kind of changed, his attitude changed, the way he was speaking to me, his combativeness. The things he was saying to me were just like, what is going on right now? Like, this is so confusing. I don't know where this came from. All of a sudden, I had to change everything about me to be with him. Can you give me an example? 
Fuck it. Um, it it became one of those things where we're having conversations about like where he wants to go with his career, what he wants to do. Of course, we're having these conversations. We're, we're about married. to walk down the aisle. This is my partner. We need to financially plan. Like, what are we doing here? We have a very expensive wedding to plan. We, you know, are hopefully going to start a family. Families, children cost a lot of money. I, all of my friends at this point have young kids at home, one, maybe two, sometimes three. And it's very, very expensive. Money just disappears. That's all I keep hearing from all of my friends. And I come from like a very stable, financially like stable dad who the only thing he grilled into my head was like, you know, make sure you plan, make sure you're saving your money, make sure this. It's a very important conversation for a couple to have the budget, you know, the broom. The bed, yeah, the normal, yeah. normal conversation. So I'm over here just like, OK, so like, what's the plan with your career? And like, what do you want to do in life? And, you know, where do you want to work? And. Like, here's what I'm doing and we need to make sure like we are talking about these conversations and it it all of a sudden became like, well, you need to be softer, Lindsay. And I'm like, what? And it was like, you need to be softer and nurturing and caring and loving and positive and excited and happy and give me hugs and tell me you're proud of me. And I was like, okay, well, but you're not, you're not really telling me something that I should be excited about yet. We're not there yet. Like, I'm just asking you questions about your career. You came and said, hey, babe, just kind of a check-in, kind of like, hey, just tough but necessary conversation we need Not to even have. that tough. I'm not even giving an opinion. I'm not. You're just asking questions. I'm just asking simple questions. And he was like, shut the fuck up. I just want you to be happy we're getting married. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay. And then slowly but surely it turned into, oh, well, I don't want the role of my wife to be somebody who asks questions and gives advice and, and has opinions. And oh. I'm just like, ooh, first of all, like, we're all very clear, like, <laughs> In who the words I of am, Gabby right? Gabby Wendy, wrong fucking answer. Yes. <laughs> he didn't and then, want you to have an opinion? Yeah. So that was verbatim. Yeah. And it was just this, like, these conversations were happening, and I'm like, what is going on? First of all, you proposed to a girl a year ago who you've been best friends with for at that time, seven years. At what point have I ever given anyone who's watched the show for five minutes any indication that I'm some cheerleader? Like, well, guess what? I am a great cheerleader, but yeah, I'm but also like a shut up and, and you're not well, like a side. I'm not a meek. 1950s Stepford yeah, wife. What the fuck? I am a very independent girl who's made my own money since I was 14 years old and has supported myself and has the most ambition and drive to, you know, start a PR firm to, you know, maintain a PR firm, hustle around New York City and like make money. And you're now telling me I'm not allowed to speak and I have to just listen, which by the way, I gave him that option. I was like, maybe you just want me to listen in this situation and not give advice or ask any questions. No, I want to talk it out with you. Okay. So like, I just was almost like backed into this weird corner of like, what is happening? I'm so confused right now. Like a month ago, you were totally fine with me giving my opinion and advice. A year ago, when you were quitting Loverboy, you were totally fine with me being your sounding board. What happened in these last two weeks where your idea and role of a, a wife for you is to just tell you, like, you're doing great and, you know, you're, I'm so excited for you and I don't really care what happens, but I'm here for you. And, yeah. you know, no, like, we're planning for our future. Like, I have to ask questions. If there, I ask questions to everyone. I'm a very curious person. I have a very active, cerebral mind. And this is me active listening to you. And it's also my way of showing my love and support because I am involved and I want your happiness. And if you're happy, I'm happy and we're happy. And how can I help you? And how can I help? Yeah. And I'm like, the way I am in a relationship is I roll my sleeves up and I give it my all. Like there is nothing half-assed about me and that's with work. That's when I was a publicist. That's me as a reality star. Like whatever it is, I give it over 100%. And that it very much includes a relationship. I love with my full heart. I throw every resource at you if you need it. If you tell me you want to, 
go into finance. Like, guess what? I got I got the resources for you. If you tell me you want to be a motivational speaker, I got the resources. If you want to start a podcast, I got a podcast producer. If anything that you want to do, I, I I will throw anything and everything that's in my repertoire and my relationships that I've nurtured for years like at you and and towards you. I will love you with my full heart. I will you know, support you with everything that I have. I will give you the patience and understanding. You know, one thing I did learn in couples therapy was, you know, how to work on delivery and tone. A lot of miscommunication that happens in relationships Mm -hmm. starts with the delivery and the tone. And I'm over here working on that, but it takes two. And I think when it comes to a partnership, it's something that I've always craved and wanted and understood what it takes to get there. And it takes two people. And I just am not certain that he had the tools to understand fully what a partnership is. It sounds almost that you still haven't gotten any true clarity about his decision. And you're almost doing your best to figure it out. Is is that accurate? I I figured it out. Uh, But yes, no, I got no answers from him. It was... What did you figure out? Probably more answers I got from myself and my friends. Like I said, when I when I set up those war rooms yeah. in my apartment and just like, you know how women are. We're like, we're detectives. You know, I have a lot of emotionally intelligent and emotionally mature women around me who are entrepreneurial and they're powerhouses. And, you know, I just I sat around and I just put everything on the table. And I I was like, we're putting everything on the table and we are breaking this down and we're finding these answers because the only way I can move to the next step of moving on and moving forward is if I have some sort of answers and closure. Um, And I wasn't going to stop those first couple of weeks until I had them. So, I mean, we just psychologically, you know, dissected everything, you know, really broke down every inch and being of this person. And I saw probably a lot of things that I was maybe overlooking because I was just so in love with him and a lot of um, inexperience of things that you have to go through emotionally as an adult that I don't think were there. Um, And I, and just, yeah, there was a lot. I don't think he cheated. I don't think that's something that happened. I don't, you know, I I don't I don't think there was any big moment. I just think that he doesn't fully understand commitment hmm. and, and you, what it takes and to even, be in a relationship. I'm always was, was surprised to hear that you thought Kyle was surprised because I I kind of just just following the story from afar and watching this past season. I would have just it would have made sense if you would have came in here and told me that like him and Carl were talking a lot recently, maybe about his career at Loverboy, and Kyle planted a couple seeds of doubt. But you don't think there's any of that going on? I mean, there could have been. There could have absolutely been points in time over summer where, you know, Kyle could have been in Carl's ear. But... He didn't um, say some nice things about you at the reunion, last last reunion. Kyle didn't? Yeah. Well, I mean, Kyle's had it out for me for years. He always assumes the worst in me and he always thinks I'm some master manipulator, you know, calculated person. I'm like, no, I'm just smarter and quicker. <laughs> <laughs> think th- I think off I think on my feet. But yeah, but in th- in seeing how Kyle sees you, it just it wouldn't There sh- could have been. If it, if they're, sure. they're best friends. But I also know. think, you know, in his communication like might tell you one thing and then tell somebody something completely different. So who knows what those, conver- I guess we'll find out when the season airs, right? But I definitely think someone was in Carl's ear. I just don't know who it was. What's a quality that you feel like when you were best friends and falling in love with Carl, you felt like he had, and then in hindsight, you look back, especially after like analyzing things with the people you're closest to and say, he actually didn't have this quality. That Communication. I, um, I thought in the beginning, I was like, oh, my God, like he's communicating like, OK, babe, I'm, you know, I'm I'm going to this meeting and then I have this call and then I have a, you know, dinner or whatever. And, and then I'll I'll be home. And what are you doing? I, I want to see you. That's surface level communication, but deeper 
communication, the tough conversations, the adult conversations, the, you know, like the hard conversations, um, I think he really struggles with. Especially, I'm guessing, if the light is shined on him, so to speak. Well, if, you know, like, is that if the topic is him and his spending or his career, his goals, his focus? Well, and- I think for somebody who, you know, has low self esteem and then you are bringing up normal conversations that a partnership requires, they don't, they don't take that too easily. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine. If Carl were here, if we were talking with Carl and we were to say, you know, do I need another? You know might need shot. another shot. <laughs> yeah. But if, if what do you think Carl would say uh, if we were to ask him, you know, why weren't you? Ha- why wasn't this relationship enough for you? I think Carl thinks that everything is just like butterflies and rainbows and you know puppies. I don't think he fully understands that like relationship there's a reason why everybody in the world says relation relationships take work marriage takes work he would maybe say um that he didn't want to go to he you know didn't want to go to couples therapy for the rest of his life but half the reason we were in couples therapy was because of him what, does he plan on working out the rest of his life like in a gym what do yeah. you mean well i mean people talk about like yeah i mean we Natalie and i treat couples therapy as like something we do to maintain our relationship Right. To stay in shape emotionally. Right. Well, especially, by the way, before you get married, too, FYI, like so many of my friends, especially before they're getting married, are in couples therapy. Yeah. And so, like, I don't know if Nellie and I are going to, like, do it for the rest of our lives, but, like, we plan on taking our care of ourselves. I mean, it's for the foreseeable future. Right. And and I equate going to the gym. Well, especially when you work together, you live together. And working out is is just as important as, like, our mental health, our relationship. And so I don't see therapy as some sort of burden, just like I don't see, you know, there's some days I don't want to work out for sure. But to suggest that I don't want to work out for the rest of my life, you know, I, I, well, think, I think it's, that's what- Couple therapy is especially important for those who struggle with communicating with their partner mm-hmm. without the help of a third party or, you know, somebody to, to guide them. And I think- the struggle came because it, it, you know, it almost seemed like any conversation that I would try to have, like it just, it was, it was hard without, you know, the therapist being like, okay, now like this is what Lindsay's saying. And this is, it was just, it was, I don't know what his, I don't know what he would say. Honestly, I, I can't speak for the guy. I, sure. that, that is a hard brain to unravel. Uh, not too long ago, I had a conversation with a friend, got out of a relationship. I was surprised to hear that they were broken up with and they were sad about it. I wasn't the biggest fan of their partner. And so afterwards, I kind of said to them, like, do you see it now, at least? To which they replied, yes. You know, they kind of, after taking a step back, if the relationship ended, as sad as they were, they were glad that maybe they weren't in that relationship any longer. Now that your heart is full, two months later, like... Where are you in the grieving process? Are you thankful you're no longer with Carl or is it still sad? I mean, shit, you were supposed to get married this month. That must obviously be difficult. But do you see it now, so to speak, in terms of whether you should be with Carl or are you still having a hard time with that? No, I am not having a hard time with that. I I definitely see it. I I think, you know... <laughs> God or the universe, whatever you believe in, had a, a bigger plan for me. And I I see that plan. After everything happened, you know, it it took two weeks of full blown, like feeling all of the emotions, three weeks feeling all the emotions, slowly getting better, but still like having breakdowns and um and it it really was this moment of like, wow. Like this, this was going to be a long, rough road for me ahead, Um, especially if I'm the one driving all the tough conversations, managing everything, driving the ship in all the directions, trying to, you know, really push on the adult, you know, future planning. And, um, you know, that's 
that sucks. Like, I need help. I need a partner. I want an equal. And the fact that I wasn't getting that was, was, became very evident. And, um, and that's, that's what I want. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in a really good place right now. I think (sighs) grieving, um, you know, going through those motions of grief and pain and and heartbreak is is a very different experience for everybody. And everyone has a different timeline that they are on with it. I think I've been through some pretty gnarly breakups in my life, some of which have been on camera. Um, And this one was the most heartbreaking breakup of my entire life. Um, I'm sorry you had to go through that. That's okay. But you know, I I realized that the way it went down, that amount of betrayal for me was so strong. Trust and loyalty are my absolute number ones. And if you betray my trust in such a way that Carl did, I equate that to him basically cheating on me. So it made it easier for me to move through those emotions of grief and pain and heartbreak and put one foot in front of the other and slowly but surely say, you know what? I know how I treat people. I know that I love with my full heart. I know how big my heart is. I know what I am capable of. And I want that in return. And once you start realizing again what your worth is, it makes it easier. And the trust part, just to like reiterate with the audience, it was kind of everything leading up to the breakup where he clearly wasn't open with you and transparent with you. Is it so much, is it more everything about leading up to the breakup or how much of that betrayal of trust has to do with him going to production, obviously, and set up the whole breakup scene? It's that. that, It's more that. It's that. Okay. A lot of it was how could somebody who I trust more than anyone on this earth betray me in such a way that doesn't even feel like he loves me? Like, you don't do that to somebody you love. You don't do that to somebody you respect. And you don't do that to your best friend of eight years, your partner and your fiance. You don't go to production and tell them what you're thinking and then set up the cameras well, and do it in such a humiliating way, yeah. so publicly humiliating, and then think I'm ever going to trust you ever again. Well, it was interesting in the last reunion, the topic of you letting Amanda know on camera about Kyle's infidelity. And then you guys kind of all hash that out. And then you and Carl were like, yeah, our bad. We shouldn't have done that that way. Was it even more surprising to you then that even like. So that that happened, that conversation with Kyle and, um, you know, about his infidelity season. I think that was like season uh, season three. That was like we're in we're during normal filming months. Like I didn't go pick the cameras back up and then go to your house and have this conversation when you think you're wrapped for the season. No, I know. But I'm saying even then, it's even then. But I'm also, I'm not your partner. Like, But I'm saying you guys even made the point where you and Carl acknowledged, hey, we shouldn't have done that type of thing. Like I'm agreeing with you in the sense that, but why didn't Carl even register? Like he apologized for something like this. This is 10 times worse and it didn't even register with him. Yeah, Nick, that's the problem. The things that are not registering. Can you walk us through that day i mean i know obviously he canceled the couple's therapy and then did he just be like hey meet in the living room production's coming over got a surprise yeah okay so let me back up a second we've we wrapped filming that sunday at the house and he was kind of coming at me in a way that was felt really icky and, and my gross. season's done and then we wrapped and we were done we then went to surf lodge with all of our cast and had a great time and i was like still like feeling really icky about the things that carl had said to me earlier in the day um 
And we, so whatever, let's go to Surf Lodge. Let's just like put a buffer like that way I'm not driving home with him and like, you know, getting into some sort of fight on the way home, just the two of us, um, based off of what he had said earlier that day. And, um, and so we go to Surf Lodge, we're on our way home and I'm like talking about next weekend's Labor Day. Like, I don't really want to go to Montauk. Like, I think it's good for us to like reconnect and go somewhere. Just the two of us. We haven't been on a date this summer. Da da da. And we have a whole conversation, which, um, you know, starts escalating weirdly because he's starting to throw out like all of these like insults at me. And I'm just like, what is happening right now? And he's just saying some mean shit that I'm not going to get into. Um, so we get into an argument in the car and I just stayed silent until we got home um, and whatever. And so by Monday, he's golfing all day, not home. And by the time he gets home, I'm at dinner with a girlfriend. I get home. He's sleeping already on the couch. I was like, OK. By Tuesday, we're in and out of the apartment you know, on different schedules. I then, you know, went to go get a manicure, which I get every two weeks and they take like two hours. And then I decided to go to Barbie with Gabby because we hadn't seen it all summer. We had no time all summer to go see Barbie. And now we're going to go see Barbie. And I come out of the movies and I get this text on Tuesday night saying that they're going to film tomorrow. And I'm just like, my radars are going off. My red flags are, are waving. Who's the text from, Carl or production? Production. And he's on it, though. He's on the text. It's a group text. Fuck. And it is like, hey, we're filming tomorrow. Like, we, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, something's up. This is not right. And then he's, he's responding immediately. He's moving couples therapy. He's clearing the schedule. He's like, oh, no problem. He yeah. is like... You know, absolutely. And I am just like, this is weird. Wait, wait. So he made it seem like, so he gets the group text mm -hmm. from we, production. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, let me see if I can move couples therapy, knowing for all hand that he knew he had to move couples therapy. And because I had not even spoken to him since we got home on Sunday. And now it's on Tuesday. Like, why would you agree to even film with your well, fiance that you haven't even spoken to in the last two days? Like that to me is like, what? This is weird. That's hardcore. So I come home and he is in our guest bedroom, lights off, door shut and hiding already because he knows if he sees me, I'm going to start asking a lot of questions because, you know, I ask mm -hmm. too many questions. <laughs> and um, just so be quiet. I wake up and I'm just like I set my alarm early. I, I wake I wake up early and I go into his room at 8 a.m. And I'm like, he's not there. Do you know what they want to film with us about today? And he pops off on me. Pops off. And it is just like the things he was saying were just, I don't even, I, this is part of like what I think about in my mind. It was just crazy shit. What was just like a one sound bite? I mean, just like, if you don't change, I'm this close to calling off the wedding. If you don't change, I am this close to calling off the wedding. And I'm like, Wait, but the, I'm like, I had calling. just woken up, rolled out of bed, opened my eyes, didn't even have my coffee. And I love coffee. And I'm trying to figure out why we're filming today, because this is not making sense. We wrapped on Sunday. It's now Wednesday morning. I got a text on a group with them. He's eager to change this, you know, our personal you know, couples therapy around so that they could make room for What's filming it? us. Change couples therapy, but we'll want you to change. I'm like, what is happening? Or else. And yeah, but I have to change or else. And it just, that's part of the ick factor that I was feeling that morning. So he left the apartment and I called my dad. I was like, something's up. I called Gabby. I called my best friend, Yvonne. And I just was like, I don't understand what's going on. Like we're having, you know, these conflicts in our communication surrounding his career like but why are we filming like this is weird and then next thing you know they showed up that afternoon and I sat on the couch and um when did you know <laughs> um I mean when it when it happened when the words came when out the words mouth. came out and when the words came out 
I don't think I reacted the way he wanted me to react. And so as soon as he said, you don't take me seriously. And by the way, I'm saying that calmly. He was not as calm when he said that. I looked at him and I realized, oh, he wants me to beg and plead and say, no, 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 please don't do this. I'll change. I'll change. I'll do whatever you need. Don't don't call off the wedding. Don't do this. That's what he wanted from me. But that is not me. And that will never be me. And um, and as soon as he said in that moment, you don't even take me seriously, I knew that this was this weird, like fucked up situation that felt like he was using the cameras to threaten me. Do you it almost sounds like he had this pent up kind of, you know, I don't know, insecurity or, you know, feeling about himself, inadequacy, whatever you want to call it. It's almost like he. And I brought that up. Yeah. And, and it's almost as if he thought that you didn't think he was capable of setting up this it's breakup. It's almost like you were there. <laughs> <laughs> and. Oh, set up the breakup? This whole like. Yeah. I wasn't going to. No, no, I would him. Never. No, him setting up the breakup. You know, this going to production, oh, doing I this see. whole thing. Like I didn't think he had it in him sort of yeah, deal. Yeah, like almost as if like you didn't think. Why I was, would I think anyone would ever do I, that? I don't know. Two weeks beforehand, we're at my bridal shower. You're doting all over Instagram. But it's Why almost, would I think yeah. two weeks later, you're wanting to break up with me and call off a wedding? Like that would never cross any woman's mind that that's what's happening. Exactly. But like. Especially if like, I'm not, nothing really happened. Like I, I didn't do anything. It seems here. like. It's he, not like I cheated on him. Yeah. I'm not like, you know. I, doing anything crazy i'm just like trying to ask questions about your career yeah because <laughs> the way you're describing it, it's like you don't take me seriously it was almost like see i don't i don't know i wasn't there but yeah it's it's kind of crazy that he did all because like the whole setup seems preposterous yeah to like to know you're gonna call off a wedding and to hide yourself in a room and call other people and then almost kind of breadcrumb you it's like he was doing pickups about your breakup before the breakup happened in a way. I think he was hyping himself up that morning, which is why he popped off on me. Mm. I think he was, he put a narrative in his mind that he, that he needed to call this wedding off and he was not going to let me make any sense in a conversation with him. So in order to like shut me up, he had to just pop off on me. So uh, he breaks up with you. He ends the engagement and then production packs up no i talked to my dad for 30 minutes in my room i was like well he did it um because like i said my red flags and radars were going off right. like i just a women's intuition is unlike no other and you know our gut instinct is usually pretty spot on so that's why we should always follow our gut but yeah, I talked to my dad in my room, like on the bed. And my dad was like, do you want me to call him? And I was like, yeah, yes, call him. Maybe you can understand what just happened. My dad called him immediately, like immediately. Um, you know, because that's what a dad does. That's what a parent does or should do. Um, and I then after my conversation with my dad, I left and I texted my girlfriend who lives like a few blocks down from me. And I was like, are you home? Like, I need to get inside. Um, I need to be inside. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I have my girlfriends texting me about the bachelorette party that we're going on in three weeks. And I'm like, I can't talk right now. Like, <laughs> this just happened. And they're like, what? I have like, all my girlfriends just started meeting me at my, my, my friend's house because it was just like, what just happened? Um, yeah, it was. What did Carl say to your dad? I think it was mostly my dad trying to tell Carl that everything in life requires communication and planning. And this is what adults do. And, you know, like, I don't know what happened, but it seems like you're adverse to communication around like adult hard topics that need to be had um and just so you know like everyone in life has to have have those conversations and this is just the beginning yeah like 
we're not even married. We don't have kids. Like, so did y'all have a conversation after, like, were y'all ever in this house again where you were like, what the fuck was that? Yeah, was there any off-camera breakup time? No. I did not respond to any of his texts for the first two weeks. I just was, like, disgusted. power move. And appalled. Mm -hmm. And um, I just... Anything he was texting was simply to try to clear his public image. And it was less about, like, are you okay? Um, Are you eating? Like, I didn't eat for a month, like, at all. I couldn't keep anything in my body. I was crying in ways that I didn't know I had in me because I don't typically cry. I was throwing up and whatever, you get the rest. And, like... I just, I would, I was sad. I was angry. I, I would just was going through all of these emotions that in any other breakup, I'm like, whatever, fuck that guy. He's a loser, you know? And I, it just, it was rough. So I wouldn't answer him because you're not even like concerned with the well being of me as a person, with my heart that you just broke, with the fact that you blew up my entire life and future, burned my fucking house down, and you don't even care to ask if I'm okay. He never called. He never tried to get in front of me. I mean, he would have had like a a window. There would have been like probably a two-day window that he could have gotten in front of me and said, I am so sorry. Like, I really handled all of this so wrong. And I realized that I humiliated you, but no. I finally sat down with him right before I went to the Bahamas with my girlfriends on my bachelorette trip. And he just was not capable of taking accountability. He was still trying to convince me that he didn't set the whole thing up. And I'm like, I can't sit here for this. You're wasting my time at this point. That was a conversation I'm trying to convince you. Yeah. How would it have, what was the alternative plan? Like, what was the alternative? Like, how else could it have been? It seems like from some kind of quote within, like, Kyle or him was sort of implying that he knew it might be a difficult conversation, but wasn't going to all the way follow through with calling off the wedding. What? No, I'm sorry. You don't call up production and say, I'm thinking about possibly breaking up with my fiance and calling off my wedding. But just in case that I do, can you drop everything, you know, they're making a TV show. You, these people are, you know, there's certain rules and hours. Well, they, also, like, a, I'm sorry, but fuck, if you lifting. don't mean to call off a yeah. wedding, you don't fucking call off yeah. the wedding. If you meant to they postpone the wedding, you postpone it. If you, But you don't call it off. There's a big difference between postponing and calling off. There's also a big difference between, hey, I'm feeling like maybe I have cold feet or having second thoughts or I'm not ready versus calling off the wedding. If you don't mean to call off a wedding, you don't fucking do it. You speak very clearly, articulately, slowly, and you make sure there is no room for misinterpretation, misunderstanding, or speculation. If you're making the biggest decision of your entire life, not only that does it affect me and you, but it affects our entire family, our friends, everyone who's already booked for our wedding. It affects our rent and our apartment situation. It affects who knows what's happening, you know, with with the jobs on Summer House. But like it affects so many people. And when you're making the biggest decision of your entire life that affects that many people, I'm sorry, but you think that through and you speak clearly and slowly and deliberately so that there is no room for a misunderstanding. That's how that works. Period. 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 Dot. <laughs> Period. <Slay. laughs> Just got hot in here. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, it, it is wild that he tried to sell you on the idea that he was going to think about it. Or, well, it's wild that like he didn't understand that calling off a wedding meant breaking up. Like he thought. Wait, he thought. Do you think he was oh. trying to still t- stay together? I think he. I think he. Yeah. I think he was still. <laughs> He wanted to still date you, but he just was like, I don't want to marry you. What are you? What? Okay. Even if, even if that was his plan, because I guess people have done (laughs) that before. I mean, I'm spilling water now. You don't do that by. 
let me if, doing what I'm he did sorry, on the but show. Like, if Nick were to come to you and be like, "Hey, I want to call off the wedding, but I want to stay together." No, we're done. Yeah, sorry, no. Sorry, if you don't want to marry me, what are we doing? We're just wasting our time. Yeah, and guess what? At this point, you've already wasted two critical years of my life that Truly. I'm not about to waste anymore. But even if there were a chance, him doing it the way he did. No, there's no it's chance. It's like, I want to call off our wedding on TV, embarrass you, but we can still stay together. No, that's did he yeah. move out of the apartment too? Or was that something, was that something he wanted? Is that something you told him to do? Um, I didn't really tell him to do anything. I, it was mostly like the first couple of weeks I had, you know, certain people as go-betweens trying to understand. Well, first of all, he ran away immediately. I don't know where he went. I don't know what he did, but he left New York pretty much the next day after that happened. I had to go film a scene with the girls, but he refused to film anything else after that. Which, was the scene? Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Um, yeah. And then. What am I missing? What? This, it's just ridiculous. After the breakup, like conversation on camera, I still had to go film yeah, yeah, another. With yeah, with the and girls. He was like, I'm done. And he just refused to film anything else after that and like ran away and left town. Like completely just. He exiled himself. So if he needed to come to the apartment, like I was like, I'm not answering him. Gabby, you answer him. Um, and so Gabby was answering him on my behalf. Um, and then I finally sat down with him that third week before I went to the Bahamas. And I could not handle that conversation because it was just another waste of my time. And now we're, I don't know where he's at. I don't know where he stays. I We're at a point now where He'll just text me if he needs to come to the apartment and get stuff and, you know, ask me when I will be gone from the apartment um, so we don't see each other. And I just answer very, like, just Wednesday. Matter of yeah, fact. Yeah. yeah, matter of fact. Like, I'm gone today, all day. I'll be home later tonight. End of story. I never tell him where I'm at or what times, really. Like, I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I think... Yeah, I saw what what Kyle said in the press, like poor guy is basically homeless. But here's the thing. If you want a home, don't burn your fucking house down. Like, but you burned your house down. And I was not at a point in time, like the first month, I'm sorting through all my emotions. I'm trying to understand everything, like where my head's at, you know, like put one foot in front of the other, start learning you know, and refocusing my energies on on just bringing myself joy and happiness. Why do I need to now add to the priority list of, well, where am I going to live? This is my home. This is the one home that I have that I spent a lot of time, money and effort to nurture and cultivate and make comfortable for us. And then you went and burned it down and you expect me to now go figure out where I'm going to live. Like, that's not really fair. I'll let you know when I'm at that point. But by the way, our lease is up in June and I'm probably not going to be at that point until June because I love my apartment. And like, what did he expect to be roommates? Like he didn't. He, it, again, didn't, didn't register. Think about it. Didn't okay. think about it. Were there conversations about how rent would be paid? He pays rent. As he should. He's on the contract. As he should. So I don't know. I don't know what his plan is. I don't really care. <laughs> Uh, Kyle alluded to the fact that uh, when we get to watch season eight back, the breakup will make more sense to us. But you clearly had filmed all of season eight, and it sounds like it didn't make much sense to you. Do you have any idea what Kyle might be referring to, or do you think Kyle's is Team Carl at this point? I mean, Kyle's always I team think it was Carl. Craig. Craig. Craig right? yeah. definitely. Craig yeah. said that. Okay. Well, Craig was there for two days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would imagine that they're going to put the season together to make it make sense. <laughs> well, I don't know. Have because you had conversations with production about that? Because, you know, we all know the show is edited. Edited, they can, right. They can take things a certain ang a certain way. Right. They uh, can show you getting as blindsided as you felt, or they can make it seem, seem like, like it is. like every fight you guys <laughs> yeah, ever had. It was obvious. And then do pickups with Carl. and We really, Nick, like, it yeah. really wasn't, like, this crazy amount of fighting. Like, you would think that... Like, we fought all summer. We did it. It was really, like, a couple of things in the beginning, which we got through pretty quickly. And then the last two weeks. But the whole, like, middle portion, we were great. 
So like this whole idea, the narrative that people try to paint, like they were fighting all summer. No, we were not. Not at all. Not in the least bit. It's normal couple arguments, relationship, you know, disagreements that are not like this crazy, like elevated fights of, you know, I don't even get activated anymore. Which what? is sad. <laughs> There's not a single Lindsay activation on the new season. I think my activation just looks a little different. Whereas, like, Fair. I'm not like blackout and yelling at you off a of fireball. You're, you're I'm more just words. like, yeah. <laughs> more just like, you know, giving you this like, I'll fuck you up face and speaking more articulately. What did this breakup teach you about yourself? Um, that I'm stronger than I think. I mean, I've always known I'm a pretty strong girl, but I'm also very, very human. And, um, you know, I think with every breakup that's as serious as something like this, you start to question a lot of things about yourself. And once I quickly eliminated that from, you know, any routine that I was going to start, you know, in my, in, in my, my grieving process, um, I was like, okay. I got this, you know, I, I went on the trip with my girls and I, those girls, ha I've never seen friendship like this in my entire life. The way that they rallied around me, the way that they flew into New York, they were tag teaming each other, making sure I was never alone. I never felt alone. Any emotions that I was feeling, they were feeling with me. Who stepped up the most? You know, I think about I had a I had a wedding in Portugal a week after the breakup and it was for one of my best friends and I didn't want to miss it at all because she was actually on season one. Her name is Jacqueline. And, you know, we've been through a lot together and I didn't want to miss her wedding. I wanted to be there and celebrate her love with her fiance, now husband. And I had one girlfriend using her points to book another best friend to go to Portugal with me so I didn't have to go alone. And I cried and cried and cried about it because I just thought it was the most beautiful thing that friends could do. Um, you know, it's like an army. And like, I would not want to fuck with these girls. They're the strongest girls I know. So I really just regained my strength from them. And after I did that, I, I, you know, got this confidence of like, okay, I can do this. Like I can, I can start moving forward. I'm ready to move forward. Like I'm not going to, you know, dedicate any more time on just thinking about this absolute disaster of a breakup. Um, and just started putting one foot in front of the other and kept the momentum. And then I started traveling and I was like, all right, I booked myself. Like it started with the Bahamas and then it was, you know, I went to Denver with a girlfriend and, and we had like a really fun weekend. And then I came back and I, I went to DC and then I went to Nashville. And then I finally was in New York for like the last two weeks, um, you know, just sitting still and, and went to dinner with all, all the summer house girls. And that was fun. And you know, just been putting myself out there more in New York now. Yeah, I was, you know, seeing you with all of the girls, it looked like such a nice moment. Can you talk about how, you know, at times during definitely season seven and maybe season eight, there seemed to be some tension. Can you talk about how your relationships with all the girls in the house are now? Yeah, we had, I had a really great summer with the girls. Um, We really got along. I think, you know, there was a, a, I think after after season seven and and after that reunion, there was like it was a complete almost like tear down and rebuild with some some of them. Um, and, you know, with Danielle specifically, I think that we had been rebuilding all summer. And by the end of the summer this this year, um, like we were we were in a really, really good place. And she has been so incredible you know, throughout this entire breakup. And, and she's really been there for me um, and super supportive. Uh, Gabby came over every single day, um, you know, that first week until I wound up in Portugal and, and she's been incredible. And then the other girls, you know, they've, they've sent me texts and, you know, checking in on me every now and then. And, you know, even over summer, like, you know, those last two weeks, if something happened with Carl, like they were right there to validate me and help me 
you know, understand different perspectives and and give advice and listen. So yeah, I'm I feel like I'm in a really great place with the girls and it's nice. And and you know, as as the as the story goes, as is one thing how does it go? Is like one it closes the door, yeah, it opens a window. Yeah. How how was like was Danielle just as shocked or what was her read on the situation? She I know you guys had a bit of a falling out, but the three of you were very close. She had a front row seat to much of their relationship. Was she as blown away by Carl's actions as you were? Um, yeah. I think everyone quite frankly was. I think everyone was very blown away. Like no like literally no one expected it to happen like the way it did and you know um I you know I think people might have had hesitations like Danielle definitely had hesitations um but I still think that she was shocked by the whole thing. Yeah. On the topic of Danielle's hesitations like looking back to kind of the way the engagement went down with this hindsight of the breakup, has that changed the way you view her actions at all? <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, I think an engagement is is like one of the biggest moments in someone's lives. And, you know, that's one of those things that you just don't touch with any negativity at all whatsoever. So that whole conversation blew my mind. Uh, no, I'm not. You know, I'm not going to say like. It is what it is. I, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that I did, her, I did, her I did, I did. actions last year were like necessarily justified. But, you know, I do think she does have good intentions and she does have a good heart. I think her delivery is just often. Do you think she sees that now? Because yes, it she was, does. It was, I, I didn't really understand. She was like, I'm not trying to make this about me, but. Montage of her but, <laughs> talking to everyone. There's no but after I don't want to make this about me me it's their engagement i get you're close but like yeah they're... she's been incredible though and in, in this whole process and and she, you know she's she's very clear she 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 made it a point like going in i think to this summer or like going into the idea if something happens like i'm gonna have to take someone's side here and and she obviously chose my side so it's it's been nice having her you know as that lockstep friend again i really like someone who can take a side because a lot of people don't. Some friends yeah. like to be Switzerland. Does it feel like anyone in the cast has taken his side? You who must not be named. <laughs> I mean, obviously like Kyle. 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 Yeah. Um, Where is Amanda? Do you think? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I, I think she's more of like the in the history of Amanda. She kind of like is more Switzerland and doesn't necessarily take sides. It's hard. It's hard to tell. I mean. I think we're all pretty much in agreement that the way it went down was pretty messed up. Has how Carl handled this, and I understand your situation was unique because you were engaged, but will it adjust how you maybe handle more sensitive issues on the show in the future just because of how impactful this was to you? Like, will you be a little bit more careful about blinds? Okay blind signing someone with information or you know how do you see that going forward like how how has this breakup adjusted how you're going to approach filming summer house in the future <laughs> um i think in regards to my next relationship i'm going to be a little bit more protective over how much i share okay. just because um you know every relationship that i've been on on camera has blown up so I think I'm going to be definitely aware of that in, in my future. Would you o be open to like having a personal boundary around maybe not involving your relationship on a show? To be honest, I think I'm owed a personal boundary yeah. after all of this. I mean, I've given this show every single thing that has ever happened to me with open arms. And I can't say that for have. everybody. Yeah. So, you know, I think at this point, if I want to keep, you know, some elements of a personal relationship to myself that I should be allowed to a certain extent, you know, like, obviously, like I said, I'm an open book, always have been. But if it's a significant relationship that I want to protect, um, I, sh I think I, I think I am I've, I'm owed a little bit of leeway with the personal I would details say. of a relationship. Well, we have a, a bunch more questions for Lindsay, especially like what's next for her on the mend. The future is bright for her. But uh, maybe let's take the spotlight off of Lindsay for a second and give someone else some relationship advice. <laughs> it's time for texting office hours. 
Drizzly. The number one way to buy beer, wine, and spirits with delivery to your doorstep when you need it. We can't say enough of great things about Drizzly. I mean, so many wonderful use cases like, you know, on your way to the party, you forgot to stop at the grocery store, but you're late. Don't worry. Pop on that Drizzly app. Oh, you forgot about a last second gift and they don't even live in your neighborhood and you don't have the time to go to the store. Bam. Drizzly. Send them a nice bottle of whatever you're fine alcohol preference is. Maybe it's a party that you don't even want to go to or you can't make. Well, instead of just no showing, send them a nice bottle of wine and say, I wish I could be there. Well, just go to Drizzly. It's incredible. There's just no reason not to get Drizzly today because it is wonderful, easy to use, and well, it keeps things fun. It makes you seem like the greatest friend of all time. I love that you can price match because so often when you're shopping for spirits, like you want a specific thing, whether it's Bullet Bourbon, Don Julio Reposado, Kettle One, any of these various specific name, name brand spirits, you can search in Drizzly, price match, see what store offers at the best rate, and then order it. So it also just makes sense as a great way to not leave any money on the table. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com, the go-to app for alcohol delivery. Must be 21 or older, not available in all locations. Again, that's drizzly.com or go to the Drizzly app today. This episode is brought to you by IQ Bar. Natalie and I have been on the go. It's tough to eat healthy while you're on the go. Well, thank God for I- IQ Bar because that kept us going on those long flights. And we didn't have to give up uh, great taste or nutrition because IQ Bar packs both. Discover the brain and body boosting benefits of IQ Bar with the ultimate sampler pack. You get seven IQ Bars, four IQ Mix Sticks, and four IQ Joe Sticks. And today, our listeners get an exclusive offer of 20% off plus free shipping. Just text FILES, F-I-L-E-S, to 64000. I will say, I think a lot of health bars taste like you're making cement in your mouth. So let me say, not only does it taste great, the texture is not offensive to me, which has been surprisingly hard. Whether you are gluten-free, whether you're keto, whether you're soy-free, want to avoid all GMOs, want to avoid artificial artificial sweeteners, truly any health-based consideration that you could have I feel like IQ Bar caters to. It's plant-based protein, and the ingredients are just so high quality, and it shows. Refuel smarter with IQ Bar Ultimate Sampler Pack. That's seven IQ bars, four IQ Mix Sticks, and four IQ Joe Sticks. And now our special podcast listeners get 20% off all IQ Bar products plus free shipping. To get your 20% off, just text FILES, F-I-L-E-S, to 64000. Get your discount. Text FILES to 64000. That's FILES to 64000. Message and data rates may apply. See terms for details. To new beginnings. To new beginnings. Oh. Oh. Okay. (laughs) I took the whole thing. Come on. (laughs) Let's see. So what happens when it's not cold? Oh my yeah, god! Disgusting. Mm. Want some coffee to chase it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. And it's like lukewarm coffee. <laughs> Ugh. Howl. All right. How's it going? Hi, I'm Maya. I'm 26. I recently hooked up with my friend's brother at her wedding and want to shoot my shot now. Okay. Oh, does your friend know about this? Yeah hook up i think so so i thought that i played it cool at the wedding and then i recently found out that i did not play it cool and that we were talking like all night and okay. she had mentioned to some of our friends being like oh like is what i see going on there going on there and they're like i think so and she's like okay sure oh okay um, wait let's back up let's back up about it since yeah <laughs> define hook up so does this mean sex? kissing uh, a we little? We didn't have sex, but we were in the same bed naked together. Yes. Oral? Mm, no. Did you get a little no. hand? We just, we, uh, we, yeah, just made just out. Just like heavy petting. And stuff and yes. Heavy petting. A couple heavy, tuggies. Yeah. Heavy petting. Oh an OTP HJ. <laughs> yeah. Tuggies. Hate uh, that. And under the pants HJ. Yeah. yeah. UTP HJ. Uh, <laughs> how, did, how did we leave it? Was there a finger bang involved? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no. Um, well, we. Some no. So yeah. this is like kissing it. and heavy petting. Yeah, yeah. Like we. So you we rounded first. Was he double clicking the mouth? <laughs> but they were Jesus. both naked. Yes. Then, well, we, we almost had sex and then we were both too drunk. And so then it just didn't work okay. out. And the next morning, I was like, this is not a good idea. So we're not going to have sex. Oh, did, okay. did you. Would you say you made it awkward in the morning? I think well, so we had a brunch the next morning. Oh, so this is the night the of the wedding. Family's there. Yes, the wedding night. Okay. 
And then, so the whole family is there. All our friends are there the next morning. And I was brutally hungover. And I probably made it weird. And that I definitely was just like, ah, well, I'm going to go now. And he's like, is that it? And I was like, yeah, I got to go. Bye. The, the friend knows, but you haven't really talked to her about it. Yes. So like the friend, I don't, the friend doesn't know exactly what happened. But it but sounds like she's like into it. Knows and she's, she's not offended. No, I don't, I don't think that she's offended. And like, they're not like super close. Like she's, he's three years younger than her. She's two years older than me. We met in college. I've been friends since, but we're not like best friends. We just kind of run in the same crowd and her and her brother, like, it's not like they talk all the time. And she's made comments before being like, you should date my brother. Oh. Gotcha, gotcha. And at the time. So. So the big question is, is do you, you want to f- shoot your shot? She said. Yeah, she wants to shoot her yeah. shot. But the question is how, and you were yes. there, we weren't there. Do you think you can just mm-hmm. pretend the awkwardness really didn't happen and then come up with like, hit them with a, like a, Hey, how you doing? Or we can come up with some joke or whatever. Or do you feel like you need to acknowledge how you like, dined and dashed so to speak and like make a make a joke or something you know like hey sorry about so that the, the issue, <laughs> yeah i think the issue is that i tried to make a like a hey if you ever want to come to philly and hang out because that's where i live let me know and because i had gone and got drinks with his younger sister the next night because we had all made plans to watch a game together he bailed i felt like i couldn't bail just because he was bailing and so then I went anyways, and I had asked her, his sister, for his number. And, and did so she give it him. to you? She gave so it. So I texted him, and I, I said, hey, like, if you ever want to come to Philly and hang out, let me know. I Like, I hope you're feeling better, blah, blah, blah. And his response was like, yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you for the invite. Mm. That's it? Yeah. Oh. Mm. Huh. Hate yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks for the invite. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I've I said that there's so many things that I did not want to go to. Probably <laughs> thanks not for the also, like, for that's what, what else would he have said? Like, thanks for the, like, yeah, sure, this weekend? Like, you know, what else he would he have said that I, I would love to? would have been better. I, I don't, When's I mean, good again. for you? I don't know. He could have just kept the conversa- conversation Is going. Is he far away from Philly? Does it require, like, a plane yeah. or... A car? It's like 20 minutes. Oh. Oh. So oh he still God. lives in the hometown. He's 20 minutes away. Yeah. Oh, okay. so like over the hill. If you're in LA, that's just like a... Well, maybe yeah, he was busy the at the time yeah. that you sent that text, you know? I, I don't know. I. What are your intentions? Do you just want to like hook up or do you want to see where this could go? I think I enjoyed spending time with him. I think the only red flag to me is that like if... I go for it and it doesn't work out, then it could be awkward with my friends. Only if you make it awkward. Okay, so like that's about it. Yeah, that is true. (laughs) I think in regards to your friend, so I Mm -hmm. dated one of my best friend's brothers and I, the Mm -hmm. whole way through, and it was super casual. Like this was like a guy that I was like, in between all my other bigger relationships, I would always just like see if it worked and like see if we could make it work. And really it was like just so I could be my best friend's sister or (laughs) sister-in-law. But I was very open and honest with her the entire time. Like anytime I was like talking to him, with him, whatever, I was just always very communicative with my best friend because she's the priority. But I think with the guy, I, I'm always an advocate of shoot your shot. Like we live in a female world right now and you know, you don't have to wait for men. We know it takes them a lot longer to process their, no offense, Nick, but like, you know, like get things going (laughs) than, than females, you know, like I, I, I'm a shoot your shot kind of girl. And if you don't put it out there, like they don't necessarily know. So my personal advice, and maybe you'll disagree, but My personal advice is just like, hey, like, you know, what are you doing in the next, what's your schedule in the next couple of weeks? You know, do you want to come to Philly one night? Like, you have to be very direct Mm -hmm. with men. They don't pick up as easily as women do. Again, sorry, Nick. No, none taken. (laughs) (laughs) I I mean, I I agree with Lindsay. I would just even be more direct. I wouldn't ask a question. I would just. Well, that's what, that was my thought was that I kind of like was there. I feel like I was too nonchalant. 
and that like if you ever yeah. want to come sometime. And he could have been busy that like, night. Like he could have been like cool things and like was like off to a, yeah. a an I mean, event or I something. want to see you again. Oh. 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 Oh yeah. As, okay. It's about as direct as you can get. No, that is true. <laughs> I also don't that would be listen. Very direct. I also wouldn't be scared of rejection. I know the the main reason that people don't shoot their shot is that they're scared of rejection. But for every like one rejection, there's a million yeses. So I just don't be scared of rejection ever. And let me know if you guys disagree. But I don't think you have much to worry about in the friends department of it being weird. I truly think that yeah, he will probably more than anything. Like it's you're pro I don't want to say you're closer with the girl his his sisters than you are, but I feel like if you shoot your shot hard, if you text him, I want to see you again, and he doesn't, he's not feeling it, and you know rejects you, he'll just avoid you for a while. And I just think you don't. I don't think you have well, to. I I saw him once in college, my freshman yeah, year. Yeah, you have nothing and to worry. Didn't see him again until the wedding. So, so as like, long as I didn't see him for six years, there you go. Like I probably will never see him ever again until they get pregnant. There you go. And so the baby shower. And that'll be about it. He's not gonna call up his sisters and be like, "Guess who texted me? Who I turned down?" Like, <laughs> right? Almost certainly, that's not gonna happen. So unless you bring it up, yeah, your biggest concern mm -hmm. really isn't that much of a concern. And it sounds mm -hmm. like both sisters are like fine yeah. with it if he wants to. Maybe we should just text him right now. Oh, text him now. What are you gonna say? Let's okay. What 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 did we decide? I want to see. You. I want to see, see you again. I want to see you again. I want to see you again. Do, do we do we ask the question? Okay. What's your schedule next weekend or next week or this? In the next I think we just two, say like, couple of weeks. See what he says after I want to see you again. Yeah, because I feel like it's so like punchy, but it's still like not too high key. Like it's just a very effective text uh -huh. solo. And then we can get into scheduling from there kind of thing. Does she say like, hi, hey. Now, back to you didn't really answer this question. Are you looking for to uh -huh. hook up with them or are you like maybe this guy I could date? Or are you just not sure yet? Somewhere in between. I'm not sure yet. I feel like we talked for like hours at the wedding. But again, like that's like talking to someone at the wedding, which I feel like is heightened emotions because you're all at a wedding and you're drunk. And we're very drunk. So it's like, I don't know if I will enjoy his company sober. Okay. Yeah. Do you so want like that? That's or I'm, like, I'm, I'm great for heart of the pain. I want to see you again is about as direct as you can get. Uh -huh. I mean, you could, if you <laughs> wanted to soften a little bit, like we should hang out again. Yeah. Soften that. Like, I want to see you again as a little, like that's, been, like, that's after, like, I've been thinking about you. That's kind of like, I can't wait to flirt with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that. That's like, you've hung out maybe a couple of times mm -hmm. and you've been texting a bunch in between. We should definitely hang out again. There you go. Okay. How about you send that? Yeah. Soften that. I want to. Did you already send the first one? No. <laughs> oh my God. Edit. 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 Scratch that. Oh, we I should definitely that. hang out. <laughs> <laughs> we should definitely hang out. Okay, so we, we should, should definitely, definitely hang, hang out, out again. again. Okay. Sent. Woo! Oh, okay. Did you put it in exclamation or a period or no? No punctuation. No punctuation. Punctuation. No punctuation. I don't know the whole answer right now, but. We'll see. Doesn't matter. That's okay. Circle I mean, back. It matters, but like, it doesn't really matter. He'll answer in three hours when he no. gets off work. Circle no. back with us and give us an And update. if he doesn't, then that is an answer as well. There you go. We love that. Period. Well, if he doesn't, then fuck go him. on dates with 15 other people. Yeah, fuck him. <laughs> Period. I what, do, you follow each, do you follow each other on social? <laughs> no, he doesn't have social media. Oh, I like that. Hot. Mm. That's cool. Nothing. That's hot, yeah. No Instagram, nothing. We love. Which I feel like is harder in the sense of like, I, I really have to shoot my shot then. Have you Googled him? Um, no. Mm, no. Uh -huh. You always got to Google. <laughs> gotta I, I was like that too. Well, I do have, the, I do, I do know his sister. So I feel like that was Google in itself. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. All right. Well, let us know. <laughs> yeah. Keep us posted. Send us some Sounds DMs good. and let us know. Oh, well. Can't wait to find out. All right, good luck, I, always, I, I, I want to wait a few seconds, but we got to go. Yeah, there's no way he's writing back right now. <laughs> like, okay, win. No. <laughs> he does work. <laughs> what if he just answers, uh, how about tonight? Yeah. Amazing. That'd be something. That would be something. Be All right, something. keep us posted. I will. Thank you. All right, take care. Bye. Bye. All right, Lindsay, I know we have to wrap up, but I think- We're already there. <sighs> well, you got to get back on a plane. Well, we got to go see our baby. Okay.
I understand. What Responsibilities. Yeah. Adulthood. <laughs> yeah. I, the only really big question I had left to ask is like, how the fuck do you film another season of Summer House? Because it's not like Vanderpump where you guys live in your separate homes, but you're still in kind of the same group, but kind of do your own thing. Summer House is you guys move into a fucking house for an extended period of time and have intimate discussions whether you like the people or not. And that's what makes the show. But like, how do you plan on doing this? Also, what else haven't we covered that you might want to cover? To answer your first question, I don't know because so many things could happen between now and then. Um, I don't know where I'm going to be at mentally there with him. Like by that time, I could be in a state of like, I forgive this guy. I'll never forget. And I'll never trust him. He'll never be my best friend. Whatever we can film. I could also be in a, I will, I never want to see him again. I don't know. Like so much could happen in this next nine, 10 months until that filming period happens. I just don't know where I'm going to be mentally. Um, you know, when you have two original cast members that... <laughs> this happens to it's a little bit sticky and tricky um but i you know every day for me gets a little better every week gets you know exponentially better and like i said like i i'm living with like a very positive mentality with like a full heart and looking towards my future and i'm really really excited for my next journey like i just spent the last 2 years like compromising and 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 trying to to be the best partner I could be to somebody I spent the last year planning a wedding and like you know gearing up for a future that is not happening so I'm really excited to just go out and like be free and single and like explore my opportunities and um where that takes me um and and just kind of see see where that goes have you dabbled in dating at all <laughs> i've dabbled in flirting dabbled uh, in flirting okay yeah it turns out i'm really good at it <laughs> okay has that flirting <laughs> elevated to any you know base rounding or mild hookups or no, kisses or not yet but i can't wait um give your eye on anyone i <laughs> I don't have my eye on anyone. I'm not taking anything too seriously right now. Okay. Like I'm I'm just like I'm really focused on just finding joy and happiness and um and somebody who matches my energy. Mm -hmm. You know, like I have a lot of energy to give this world and I have a lot of um, you know, drive and ambition and excitement and and all the things that Carl didn't think I had. Um, you know, I'm excited to dedicate that to somebody who's deserving of it and, um, you know, receiving that back in a way that I, I also deserve. In your next relationship, how do you plan on kind of qualifying that? Like, how do you plan on making sure, because after talking to you, it, it sure sounds like as wonderful as you might've loved Carl then and in the relationship at the time, but having taken a step back from this relationship, you've realized that maybe, you know, I'll just say it, maybe Carl didn't match your level, so to speak. Right. And maybe he has a good heart and maybe he tries hard to do his best, but you need someone who's maybe at a different level with a certain level of ambition and has their shit together, which Carl's still on that path. How are you going to make sure that your next partner can bring that to the table without you having f to find out years into the relationship? Um... Uh, I think, you know, having some deep, tough conversations early on, um, I think it's, it's, I, I think I can pick up pretty quickly right now, right now, like my main list is like drive and ambition. <laughs> Hopefully you're successful already. And also like emotional intelligence, I think is big for me at this point in time. And, and in intimacy, sexual compatibility, chemistry, mm. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Performance. And so I, I'm just, <laughs> shut the fuck up, Nick. It stirs the pot. 
Um, so I, you know, I'm excited. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to find that out without scaring someone away. Right. Because like, but maybe scaring someone away isn't that bad of a thing. Right. I'm guessing you have not scared away a lot of the wrong people in the past. Yeah. To, maybe yeah. I should try to scare more men away. And if they don't go away, I'm like, okay, it's a weed out course. But right? truly like your, wouldn't you say your person, whoever that person is, won't be intimidated by you, won't be scared away by direct conversations and honest communication up yeah. front about topics that are necessary and needed to have a successful relationship. Yeah. That's, <sighs> that's a lot to get out, but you know what I'm saying? You know, like maybe I also like, I, that's also like what I'm looking for is, yeah. is, is really like, you know, someone who yeah i guess like can get deep with me but also um yeah not be intimidated by that and i i have a lot of confidence and and i don't know where it comes from i think it comes from just like as a kid i just always had to keep up with the boys and you know be yeah. be better as a as a girl with you know playing with the boys but yeah i as someone who's not intimidated by my confidence and is not necessarily impressed by it but you know, is, is more, is successful in their own right that they don't, they're like, that's my girl. That's my fucking girl. Who's like crushing life over there on reality TV. And I'm crushing life over here. And it's, it's a completely different industry. Did you ever feel like Carl was ever proud of you? I do. But I also feel like he was intimidated by me as well. Like intimidated by maybe my, you know, my outspokenness and my popularity and 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 mm -hmm. everything that comes along with being on a tv show but yeah i do think that he was proud of me i i really do okay. but i also think that you know over time when someone is doing so much to succeed and excel like that's weighing on somebody who you know yeah is not like is in a transitional moment let's talk about your future <laughs> No. Do yeah. you know anyone who is single who is not on reality TV? I mean, that are worthy. Have you guys had any guests on? Hmm. Well, Dustin do you like Lynch. do you like country singer country singers? Dustin Lynch, he's in the market. He says hi, by the way. Do you know? Oh, 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 okay, oh. Oh. okay. Oh, we just get flirting, folks. So don't need us. <laughs> Literally, we're fired. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone well, else? Um, <laughs> what are you looking for? What's your type? Well, we've I honestly, the physically, I have no type. If you like take a lineup, I have, it's like tall, short, brunette, blonde, you know, I, literally everything. Like I, my friends have made fun of me for 15 years. There is no type physically for me. It's more about, it's more about mental capacity right now. If you were to wake up and it's June, what would success mean to Lindsay? Like, where would you want to be? Like, like, where are you in your life? What's your relationship status? How do you feel about Carl? Okay. You know, it's so interesting. I actually had this conversation over summer about my version of success. And I had this conversation with Carl. You know, my version of success in my mind has changed over the last, how long have I, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. So in my early 20s, it was like climb the ladder of PR and get to the top and like, you know, like really succeed at at my job. And I did that. Then in my early 30s, it was like own my own PR firm and make sure it's successful and keep it afloat and, and you know, hustle around New York City, the hardest city to hustle around in the whole entire world. Um, and I did that. And now, as of over summer, my version of success was like engagement, marriage, and starting a family. And like, to me, that I really find that to be a success. But I will say, since everything happened, I am reinvigorated. I'm re-inspired. I feel challenged again. I am focused on myself, whereas before I was so focused on not only myself but somebody else and and pushing two people instead of one and now that I'm pushing one it's like I want to own real estate I want to make as much money as humanly possible I want to write a book which has been sort of on the back burner for me 
for a couple of years now. And now more than ever, I'm like, start journaling. It is time. Yeah. It's time. So I'm I'm re-inspired in a creative way. Um, I'm re-inspired in a, a financial way. Um, and I think the rest will fall into place. For all the ladies out there or men who maybe recently got out of um, a tough breakup, especially an ended engagement, what advice would you have for them? Oh, God, great question. Advice, I think, you know, advice is easier to give than to take, right? But I think in my in my situation, it's like, you know, really think about what you want. Really think about who you are and know your worth and don't settle for less. You know, I think when when you get out of like a tough breakup, you just pick yourself up. Like like I said, everyone handles grief and pain and heartbreak differently, but life goes on and just keep in mind that this is only temporary. Time helps and um I'm very understanding that not everyone moves quite like I do. Mine was a little bit easier because there's no lingering feelings, but um you know, you just have to put what one foot in front of the other and keep it moving. All right. I know you got to go. But we got a plane to catch, folks. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. did your what did your couple therapist say after the breakup? Uh, I never went back. <laughs> oh, you never talked to them. <laughs> no, he wanted me to and I I was like, "How did you cancel the couple therapist?" Do this on camera and then beg me to go to couples therapy. You canceled the couples Wait, therapy. Wait, Carl tried to drag you back to... Yes. Mm. Yeah. And then he had spent like the last two weeks of summer telling me couples therapy wasn't working. I'm like, dude, you just sent, spent the last two weeks telling me this wasn't working. Then you canceled it to do this on camera. And now you're sitting here trying to get me back into couples therapy. Like, none of this makes sense. None of this. This is like... This is not making sense to me. And I am absolutely not going to a couples therapist when there is no couples involved. Well, Lindsay, I can't thank you enough. You <laughs> seem like you're in great spirits, truly. Thank you. Um, in only two months. I mean, I think that's not lost on, on me, at least. Someone who's tough, tough breakups can be tough. Two mm. months, you've, you've crushed it. Yeah, I've been through a lot in life, right? So I think it gets easier, like once you really work through your emotions which i you can't like it's like you know you're gonna survive this like you can't like numb your emotions like i chose not to numb them and i chose to just like dive in to the deep end of emotions and like really feel the feels and then i was like all right that's it moving on and right. like i said he made it easy for me to do that well, we wish you absolutely nothing but the best uh Thanks, we are guys. super excited not only well, you answered all our questions, but obviously we'll watch season eight, but I'm already excited for season nine. Yeah. Season nine. Season New nine. Lindsay, yeah. You know? Single Lindsay. Single, Single Lindsay. Lindsay's a... Indifferent Lindsay. It's another hot hub summer coming at you. <laughs> there we go. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, we certainly enjoyed this episode with Lindsay. Hopefully you did too. Tell your friends, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Send in those questions at asknickatthevilefiles.com for all things texting, office hours, mediation, Ask Nick, you know the drill. We'll see you back on Monday. Crazy. Bye. Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.